since 1869. They've played college football in New Jersey at Rutgers University. But there's never been a home opener under these circumstances. Just 11 days after the most devastating event in American history took place just a short commute away from campus. Today, scarlet and white has become red, white, and blue. And whether fans are rooting for the home team or have made the trip north from Blacksburg, they're all on the same team. Today, it is a college football Saturday just like any other, but not like any other. The Rutgers players and the visitors from Virginia Tech return to the field, but first, there's time to reflect on an event no American can ever forget. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Sims. A pleasure to be with you once again for Big East football. Glad you're with us for another season. Jeff Bostic and John Sanders will be joining me shortly. This certainly is a different time for us here in the United States of America. And as President Bush said to us a few days ago, let's try to get back to a life of normalcy. And that's what college football is doing back in full force today. And glad you're with us for three and a half hours of enjoyment as we watch these young men battle each other in this great game of college football. Right now, let's turn it over to the Rutgers PA announcer, Harry Hopman. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join Rutgers President Francis Lawrence the Rutgers and Virginia, Tech, and Virginia Tech athletic directors, the coaches, players, and game officials for a special observance of memory and tribute. Presenting the colors is the color guard from the Rutgers University Army ROTC Queens Guard. On September 11th, the United States was struck by a tragic terrorist attack. We extend our deepest sympathy to the families and friends of the victims of this horrific event, including those members of the Rutgers community. As a country, we have come together to form a bond that is stronger than ever before, a bond that no one person or group can ever destroy. This is a tragedy that every American must try to cope with. Many lives were taken from us, but we as a community must realize there is one thing that can never be taken from us our freedom. Please remain standing following a moment of silence for the singing of our national anthem by Professor Frederick Urey of the Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University and God Bless America by the Rutgers Glee Club under the direction of Patrick Gardner. and the bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red flare the bombs burned Sting in a cape proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled burn? And 
back for Biggie's football here at Rutgers Stadium. Dave Sims along with Jeff Bostic, John Sanders and Jeff good to be working with you and John again fifth year in a row and what kind of emotions are these young men going through right now as tough as it's been for this country. Can you imagine these young men watching the playing of the national anthem and God bless America the emotion that's running through this country right now and now they have to step out on that field and, and play a, a real you know battle. They're going to they're going to have a very good test Rutgers against Virginia Tech Dave number nine team in the country the Virginia Tech Hokies. Garnell Wilds deep to receive. John Mora with the kick drives receiver deep into the end zone and they'll keep it right there for the touchback. Jones keeps it right there and let's go down to our third compadre John Sanders. What do you got John. It is the first home game here at Rutgers Stadium and the first ever for their new head coach Greg Schiano. He has certain emotions that he will bring with him to this game this afternoon. All right John we look forward to working with Good emotional but there's a job to be done and we're going out there we're playing the ninth ranked team in the country who's a very very good football team they're well coached so I'm going to have to temper that emotion and, and be ready to do my job and uh, I know our coaches and our players will be ready to do their job. John thank you and thank you Greg Jason O'Henney with the first carry takes it across the 25 to about the 26 yard line. Brought down there by Kevin McAdam the strong safety. There's Ryan Cubitt. First true freshman to ever start a season opener for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Let's go, let's go. Second down and three after that first strong play. Cubitt trips, got some time. Ball tipped up in the air. There's an interception. Welch has got it down the sideline to the five to the two yard line. A penalty flag on the play as well. But Brian Welch, the starting middle linebacker, gets the pick of the tip ball. And just like that Virginia Tech the number nine team in the country got a 27 yard return. Once again Bud Foster's defense creates opportunities. I think we're going to have a face mask call on uh, Rutgers. It was Dion Provit. They've got the tip on that play. Not exactly the way that the uh, young quarterback for Rutgers Cubic wanted to start the game a batted ball Brian Welch it seemingly always Virginia Tech's defense is in the right place at the right time 
Nathaniel Adibi gets his hand on the ball. Very athletic guy. Not the way Rutgers wanted to start this game, Dave. Not at all. Here comes Virginia Tech. First play from scrimmage, Burnell. Trying to get in. And he's real close. Nothing like starting uh, your first offensive possession of the conference year at the one yard line. Tell you what, if football was that easy, everybody would play it. Gary. And this game starts off kind of the way that uh, Rutgers played two weeks ago against Miami. Mm -hmm. Penalties, turnovers, fumbles. And right now in the Shiano era, they're not a good enough football team to allow teams like Virginia Tech this type of field position. Power eye formation for the Hokies. Go outside with Burnell. Ferguson with the block, cuts it in. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Keith Burnell, a junior out of Ches Chesapeake, Virginia. And that's his fourth touchdown this season. And now the number one rusher with Lee Suggs lost for the season with a left knee injury. ACL tear. Burnell's a good one. Junior, six foot, 202 pounds, and Frank Beamer's club's on the board. Just a minute 20 into the game. Point after by Carter Worley is good. Worley 12 for 12 and points after here in this early season. And Greg Shiano now got to rally his guys and get things going. They had decent field position, but Adibi made a fine play with that tip ball. And they really had a very positive first play, a running and play up the left side, O'Henney with about a seven yard gain. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to be good on first down. And if you have not seen Virginia Tech play defense, you're in for a treat. This is one of the fastest defenses I've ever watched. And, and back in 99, they had a very, very quick uh, defensive squad led by Corey Moore. This team is every bit as aggressive and fast. Shannon's certainly a Jersey guy. And that's one of his trademarks. And he's going to play hard on that, try to turn this program around. It's a good special teams unit. That's one of the things that uh, Frank Beamer loves to hang his hat on. He is one of the best in the business. Nathan Jones deep to receive again. Four records. John Mulra will do the kick. Seven nothing. Virginia Tech. Just a minute 20 in. High kick. Jones taking nine yards deep and out of the end zone. So another touchback. Take a look at the Rutgers starting lineup. Real good athlete in their tight end, L.J. Smith. They look to cut him loose. He only has five catches on the season so far. Aaron Martin, number 82, is a guy they will throw a lot to. And they'll be matched up against these guys in the defensive backfield for Virginia Tech. A lot of veterans there, Jeff. This has got nine returning starters from Virginia Tech's defense. First and 10 from the 20 for Rutgers. Keep it on the handoff. O'Henney again. Nice game. Gets to about the 25 yard line. Five, five yard game on that O line for Rutgers. Blackwood, Bismuka, Bohr, Mills, and Duffy. And Brian Bohr converted tight end at center. And they're really missing a veteran, Mike Esposito. You see the defensive line, number 71, David Pugh spent a lot of time with his dad last night talking. You better put a helmet on that guy. No doubt about it. Trying to establish the run, maybe a two yard pickup. As they take it right into the middle with O'Henney, and now they say a fumble. Goodness gracious. O'Henney fumbled, and Willie Pyle recovered. So another turnover for Rutgers. And in watching the starting lineups, there's one name that you didn't see in the lineup. Number 30, Dennis Thomas, the senior running back, has had great success in two games. One thing any football coach will tell you start with the football end with the football the ball obviously out Virginia Tech gets a lot of helmets to that football 35 Willie Powell recovers the football once again Virginia Tech's offense with great field position can't beat this either 29 yard line Grant Knoll screen to the left Ferguson got some blockers breaks free 20 keeps it alive to about the 18 17 yard line brought down by Seabrooks. So Jared Ferguson, his fifth catch of the season. So the 
Virginia Tech couldn't ask for two better starts at the 29 and the one yard line. Burnell, you've seen him score. Ferguson on that screen there. Andre Davis, a game breaker, number 88, and a real good tight end in Slowakowski. Going against the secondary of Thompson, Barry Seabrooks, and Cologne. First and 10 for Virginia Tech. Ferguson taken down. Sean Seabrooks got in to make the tackle, came in from his free safety spot. Take a look at the Virginia Tech offensive line. Anthony Davis, Jacob Gibson, Demasi, the only returning starter on that offensive line. Jake Grove, a guy that's been limited with uh, injuries, namely back injury, and Winsick. Torrance Heggie, they need a lot out of him to pressure the quarterback from the edge. Gary Brackett, he's their motor guy in the middle, the middle linebacker. No gain on that last play, second down and 10. Play action for Noel. Gets it to get loose ball. Loose ball. Who's got it? Some Rutgers may have got it. It'll be Dwayne Thompson recovers on the drop ball by Sean Witten. So Rutgers gets a break back the other way. Seabrooks caused the fumble. Boy, there's an emotional turnaround there for Rutgers. They really needed it. Sean Seabrooks making big plays. First two weeks of the season continues that. Gets his hand on the football. Number 21, Dwayne Thompson being able to recover it. This is huge for the Rutgers offense. And just morale, you can't go down early in this game 14-0. Absolutely not. You give it to O'Henny again, and he's bottled up in the backfield. Five play in there by Ben Taylor, Brian Welch as well. Two really good linebackers. And the speed, Jeff, you're not kidding. The speed to the ball by this, ball, this unit is remarkable. And watch number 40, Ben Taylor has got a knack for being at the ball at the right time. This guy is a tremendous leader for this football team. Top tackler coming into today's uh, game. Hit a team best 103 tackles last year. No huddle here for Rutgers. Cuban, step and throw. And he gets it to Del Rico Fletcher, the senior from Braddock, Pennsylvania, taken out by Ronnie Whitaker. Knock out of bounds by Ronnie Whitaker. And this is what they're going to have to do. Their patchwork offensive line uh, for Rutgers. Uh, you know, Ryan Kubik took a beating two weeks ago, busted his chin open. His dad, Bill, is the offensive coordinator. It's got to be tough coaching your own son at this level. At this level, absolutely. <laughs> it's difficult at most levels, but boy, when you get up here, 34 and change. And look out, Kubik gets blasted again from the backside. Taylor was there, Ben Taylor with the sack. Welch was there. They brought the whole package. Talked about him early, number 40, Ben Taylor. You know, just a simple blitz up the middle of, and we talked about the patchwork offensive line. David Pugh with the initial pressure. We talked about him early. This guy is a, a big time player, number 71, David Pugh. Ben Taylor out of Blair, Ohio. 6'2, 235. He's one of the best in the business here in the Big East Conference. Mike Barr. It's a punt. Four Rutgers going to throw it. How about this? Got to be wide open. It's good for first down to the 30 yard line. Sean Seabrooks with the catch. Mike Barr. And how about Frank Beamer? Really stunned. A 16 yard pickup for Rutgers. Probably the most surprised man in the stadium, Frank Beamer. Right there, Seabrooks. And you know what? What type of pressure do you have from your uh, punter bar to throw this ball? This is the hardest ball when your receiver is wide open. Pretty good offensive year for Mike Barr. He's got a 32 yard run to his credit, too. He netted 20 on it. He was running out of his own end zone. They run pretty straight up the middle. Not much going on there for Ricky Cook, his first carry this afternoon. Keith McAdam on the stop the strong safety for Virginia Tech. Yesterday when we met with uh, Rutgers head coach Mike Schiano, the one thing that impressed me, this guy dreams big. I mean, this program has been down for a long period of time. He reminds me of a Charlie Pell when he came to Clemson. He's a hands-on, wants to get his hand and stamp his print on everything at this university. Five wide look, Cuban throws and poorly thrown that time, trying to get it to number seven, Del Rico Fletcher. Whitaker on the coverage for Virginia Tech. When we talk about coaching your own son, how about having your son play as a freshman? Uh, what do you do two weeks ago? You face the number one team in the country. Well, we got a week off. We come back. You get the number nine team in the country. It doesn't get any easier. He wasn't seeing this type of athlete in high school. Not at all. One for three, two yards so far passing. 
for Ryan Cubic. Third down and nine. He goes from the gun again. Four wide receivers. Screen. Uh, middle screen. LJ Smith. LJ got hit. Breaks a tackle. Takes it to the 37 yard line. Kevin McAdam with the first hit on him. That'll leave him about three yards short of a first down. Ben Taylor there as well. So LJ Smith. They try to get him going here. The senior from Highland Park, New Jersey. And I'd be willing to bet you're going to see Virginia Tech come after the punter this time. Frank Beamer is very seldom upstaged in special teams. That's right. That's by, that's by anybody in the country. Bar leading the conference and punting at 47 yards and a little shifting there, but and they do come. Fair catch made by Andre Davis. He ran up to the 27 yard line, penalty flag, and Paul's probably going to have to do with interference by Nathan Jones, number 32, 35 yards on that punt. This is a bad call. Number 32 Nathan Jones covering downfield. He can't find where the football is. Andre Davis number 88 coming up to catch the football. Nathan Jones did everything he could to stop. Kick catching interference on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Five yard entered. First down. Bad call. Plain and simple. Ball at the 35 yard line. Greg Shiano would certainly agree with you on that. Virginia Tech going to start its first possession in its own territory. Hokies lead 7 0. You're watching Big East football from ESPN. Plus. Back here at Rutgers Stadium, Virginia Tech, the number nine team of the country with a 7 0 lead in the conference opener for the Hokies. Rutgers comes in at 0 1, having lost at Miami a couple of weeks ago, 61 0. Virginia Tech from its own 35. Burnell straight up the middle and finding some room down the sideline. Boy, he's got some gas, doesn't he? 2015 finally taken out of hands at the 10 yard line by Nick Colon. The Rutgers, 1 1 overall, 1 0 0, 0 1 rather, in the Big East Conference. He sees a big gain of 55 yards by Keith Burnell. And Ricky Bustle caught him in the perfect stunt. Watch Pismuka right here. He's going to avoid this area. Burnell hits it right up in there. You're talking about speed. Shiano with a somewhat undersized defensive line trying to protect them by stunning. Touchdown saving uh, tackle right there at the 10-yard line. Longest run of the season for Burnell. He had a 42-yarder earlier this season. It's time to give it to Ward. He bounces outside. Maybe a gain of a yard. Actually, Got to the line of scrimmage. Nate Cologne stopped him. Wayne Ward, senior out of Plant City, Florida. Greg Schiano yesterday said something that, you know, he needs to change the image of, of Rutgers football. I was down on the field before the game started. You obviously see the change on their helmet, uh, their logo. They have actually got guys in the offensive and defensive line that look like Division I players. They spent a lot of time in the weight room and big physical tough practices. Going to need it to compete at this level. Shannon talking about wants to compete for a national championship down the road. Here's Whitten. It is called down at the six yard line. Coverage on a play by Tony Berry. Witten, Sean Witten, fumbled the last time Virginia Tech had the ball. Sean's a junior out of Elizabethton, Tennessee. That's his sixth catch of the season. Got his first start against Connecticut a couple of weeks ago. Third down play for the Hokies. No three for three, 19 yards so far. Rutgers blitzes. Picked up. Flip it out. Ferguson walks in. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Caught him in a blitz. Rutgers is so content, so intent on stopping the run. Look at all of these people in the box. Nine people on the box. Man to man on the outside. Number 41, Gary Brackett trying to get out into the flat and cover Ferguson. This is the easy throw, easy catch. Barley's point after is good. 7-13 to go here in the first quarter. And Virginia Tech 
and its conference opener leading 14 nothing here at Rutgers. Nothing Virginia Tech over Rutgers here at the 713 713 mark here in the first quarter. She's scoring drive. Big play though, the Brunel 55 yard run. That was a first play after they'd picked up five more yards on an interference on the uh, punt. Mullerup, low liner this time. We got a chance for Rutgers to return it, but he gets a bounce over Jones's head and out of the end zone. Let's check in with our to our Sports Center studios, Mike Gleason with a look in on the BC Navy game. Well, Dave, uh, BC down in this one. Check it out. Brian Madden steps back and he finds Jeff Gaddy. This one covers 49 yards of real estate. Navy on top of BC, 7 nothing in the first. Let's go back to uh, Dave and Jeff at Rutgers. Mike, thank you very much. Can you imagine how fired up those Navy kids must be. Tell you what, they're a well disciplined team. Rutgers keeps it on the ground. Not a lot going on there. Ricky Cook got the carry. Jake Housewright with the tackles a penalty flag on the play. And it was a very late flag coming from the field judge. Look for some type of personal foul. Third time Rutgers has started at its own 20. Penn Wagers and his crew working the game today. Greg Schiano, vast experience for a guy 35 years old. And he has coached with some top head coaches. Uh, in Chicago, he was with uh, Dave Wanstad, obviously last year with Butch Davis, now with the Cleveland Browns. Illegal block in the back against the offensive team. Penalty is from the previous spot. Replay first down. So that's going to back Rutgers up. And Greg Schiano's face, his expression on his face said it all. We're going to go no huddle. We're backed up to their own 10. Josh Hobbs in the game. He's a man of motion top of your screen. Cuban looks for him, throws it back to Hobbs. And he gains up to about the 18 yard line, picks up eight. Taylor was there. Had some help from number 24, Larry Austin. Larry, the field corner for Virginia Tech. What do you think of this no huddle? I know West Virginia's running it. I would not like to be the offensive lineman in the no huddle. Under pressure, got some time. Throws a duck up in the air, up for grabs, and it's picked off. Ron Yale Whitaker. Whitaker with the interception. He beat Larry Austin for it. That ball hung up in the air for a long time. Virginia Tech will take over at its own 48. And Kubik does a very good job of eluding the initial rush. This ball is up in the air far too long. Larry Austin, uh, I'm surprised that, that more of the Virginia Tech secondary wasn't back in time to fight over this football. A poor throw and we talked about it earlier. You know, you've got a freshman quarterback. You're playing one of the top defenses in the country. They've allowed a grand total of 10 points in two games. Welcome to the NCAA Division I. Sure enough, Sean Carty was the intended receiver. Rutgers has turned it over three times. Virginia Tech once. No play action. Got a man over the middle. The tight end, Slowakowski, to the 31 yard line. Slowakowski brought down by Nate Colon. First catch of the season. For Big Bob. 21 yards on that pickup. Bob's a senior out of Pittsburgh Central Catholic. Good job of the ball thing. One person we haven't talked about is really Grant Knoll. You're talking about filling some huge shoes. Uh, Michael Vick uh, departs uh, Virginia Tech after his sophomore season, number one pick in the draft. Pretty big shoes to stick your oh, feet into. Tremendous. And he's putting up numbers already. Knoll. Run it up the middle. Ward keeps it alive. And finally taken down. Nate Cologne getting a lot of work. He made the tackle. Had some help from Alfred Peterson, number 92. And yesterday when we talked to Ricky Bustle, the Virginia Tech offensive coordinator, about Grant Knoll, I said, how did you assess his first start against Connecticut? 
He said, if I would have dreamt it, scripted it, I wouldn't have scripted it that well. You bet. 16 for 20, three touchdowns. Very solid performance. Let's look at the Rutgers. Brain trust upstairs. Grant Knoll, third in passing yards per game in the Big East Conference. And that play was not the way it was designed, that's for sure. This is going to be interesting. It looked like Rutgers was offsides, and the center, Steve DeMassey, tried to snap the football. It looked as if Knoll was not ready for it. So we'll see what the. This, this is why these guys get. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Greg Schiano pleading his case to the line judge to no avail. Nick Trainer. And they walk this one up. Tough to tell from this angle. It looked from up on high that Rutgers was a little bit in the neutral zone. Steve DeMassey snapped the ball. Quarterback's not ready for it. Well, Emmett Johnson to the bottom of your screen for Virginia Tech. Second down and three. A run Ward got a sweep right side, turns it up. Second effort, got him the first down and more. The thing that you can send, you continually see with the Virginia Tech running backs, whether it be Ward, whether it be Burnell, uh, talk about filling some big shoes. How about Lee Suggs out for the season? So many of the defenders bouncing off their running backs. And I was on the field before the game. Uh, you're going to see a special young man, number seven, Kevin Jones. Highly touted recruit, running back. You're talking about a guy that is put together. Sure enough, watch them in drills. I'll tell you about that in a second. First and 10 from the 17. Fullback gets a rare opportunity. Doug Eastlick. Doug running straight up the middle, picks up a couple. And uh, you're talking about the young man Kevin Jones. There's looking Doug, but they had that with the running backs. They had like a bull in the ring thing where one guy gets the ball and turns around, points at the guy, and they run into each other to get loose. Kevin Jones practically wiped out Derek Ferguson on this one drill. You know he what? It's normally right attack the people in different colored jerseys. Well, Jones is in the game right now. Big fan favorite already in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech got him beating out Penn State among us, principally Penn State. No the time. End zone touchdown. Emmett Johnson with his first TD of the season. That's a 16 yard hookup. And he beat Dwayne Thompson on that play. And for Grant Knoll, he's got six TDs on the season. This was not a throw that I'm sure Grant Knoll will be proud of. It'd make Billy Kilmer proud. And you see Thompson falling down. Another thing that you realize. Virginia Tech has some big rangy wide receivers. Yes, they do. You're seeing one of them right there. No doubt about that one. 16 yards on that scoring play in the day that Grant Knowles having. How about six for six? 62 yards, two touchdowns. And a long one so far in the home conference opener for Greg Schiano. It's 21-0. Frank Beamer and the number nine Hokies. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders and our Big East crew with you as we open up our 2001 season. 21 nothing, Virginia Tech. 14 points already off of turnovers, and John Moore is having a fabulous day with kickoffs. There's another one into the end zone. Let's get another Sports Center update. Mike Gleason. Mike's going to tell us about Penn State and Wisconsin. And Simsy, the Badgers on the board first. Brooks Bollinger back at quarterback. Play action, Mark and Ellie, only three yards, but it caps off a nine play, 61 yard march in State College. Badgers missed the extra point at 6 0. Wisconsin over Penn State. Dave? All right, Mike, thank you very much. I tell you, long faces up in Happy Valley, Unhappy Valley right now. And Mr. Paterno getting very close to uh, breaking Mr. Bryant's uh, all time victory record. But it's going a lot slower than we thought, and a lot of people thought. That game against Miami. Miami really did a number at Penn State. I tell you, Miami will do that to a lot of people before the season's over. Mm -hmm. well, Henny with the carry. It's going to be brought back. Virginia Tech with three touchdowns in a span of nine minutes and 36 seconds.
Well, sadly, if you can think of something bad, it, it's gone badly for Rutgers right now in this football game. And they've been their own worst enemy. Three turnovers, multiple penalties. The last penalty on number 85, L.J. Smith, illegal procedure. And we said it earlier, they're not a good enough football team to continue to hurt yourself in field position. That's what the coaches were saying yesterday. Bill Cupid in particular in the offense, 10 guys are doing everything right. The one guy messes up. And the interesting thing, when we were talking to him, we asked him one question. Tell me who was a standout on your offensive line. And there was dead silence for about 10 seconds. Yeah. His offensive line has gone through a lot of injuries. You don't see Mike Esposito in the lineup. Sorely missed. And they're a young group that's just learning to play together. Cubit, top 20 high schooler in the country, number one in Missouri. Running for his life here. Look at the speed. Look at that speed. Oh, my goodness. Ben Taylor. Wow, did he close in. We talked about their speed. Bud Foster, their defensive coordinator at Virginia Tech. It's amazing when you watch the tape, but, but game day when you watch the live action, Ben Taylor on a mission. You're going to see his hat around the football all afternoon. If you got to, if you got to have 45 or 50 football players, give me 45 Ben Taylors. Amen. Cuban looked like he was in the clear, and all of a sudden he had nowhere to go. They only rushed three. Screen. L.J. Smith, house right, <laughs> slows him up, and then gets a lot of help. Dan Wilkerson, one of the defensive tackles there, number 54, gets over and gets a piece. He's a senior from uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Undersized but strong. 6'1", 258 is what they list him at. I saw him in the elevator yesterday. And there's another Dan Wilkinson that plays for the Washington Redskins. I said, you're not big daddy. Little goes, daddy. I said, you're little daddy. <laughs> He's only about 80 pounds smaller than uh, big daddy. One of the great punt returners in the country, Andre Davis, deep to receive this one from Mike Barr. Mike indeed does punt it. Short. And it gets a Virginia Tech bounce, and it's down at the 49-yard line. So Virginia Tech with more great field position, and let's go down to John Sanders. And, of course, both teams affected by what happened last week in New York City, especially the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And prior to the ballgame, head coach Frank Bremer talked about that event. I think they have helped us. I think these mature leaders have helped uh, our football team get through this thing. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think we made a good preparation this week, and, and hopefully we're ready to play a good football game here today. I don't think there's a single American, though, that doesn't have an empty spot in their stomach and, uh, and a hurt in their heart uh, for what's happened to our country. There was one other problem for Virginia Tech was they were the team that was traveling. They traveled by charter. Earlier in the week, they considered maybe going to another airport other than Newark. But things are fine in Newark. They went into Newark. They will fly out of Newark after this game is over. Back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. An injured player down on the field for Rutgers. And Jeff, back to a point you made and, and we've made for years in watching Big East football and, and covering uh, Big East football now on TV and radio since about 1990. And a thing I remember always you can count on from Frank Beamer clubs, their running backs. I mean, you really have to bring them down. They had third, fourth, and fifth effort. Jones showed you some on that play. And the one person that really doesn't get a lot of uh, the accolades probably the way he should is Mike Gentry, the weight coach at Virginia Tech. When you see these people, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, linebackers, running backs, DBs, they are all put together very strong. One thing you're going to play a Frank Beamer team, it's going to be a physical squad, and they're going to be excellent. You're looking right there. This is the man on the spot, Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator. Ricky was a senior at Clemson when I was a freshman. I've told people for years, Ricky, Ricky was the slowest wide receiver in NCAA history, but he had the best hand. I, I told him I was going to get that in. If the ball was in his area, he would catch it. Velcro. And Billy Height, running backs coach. Kevin Jones deep back on in this offset eye. Second down and four. Jones gets the carry. He's got room. 30, 25, some spectacular blocking after a good read after that play got closed down. Wayne Briggs finally ran him out of bounds. 
He is creating a legend already. Kevin Jones, an 18 yard run. I'm sure that Billy Hike, the running back coach, would love to take credit for this. You don't coach this. This is God given ability. Check this block out right there. Number 47. Tremendous block with Briggs, but look at this young man's speed. Briggs with a terrific block. Penn State thought they had him. He was a sensation in suburban Philadelphia. So the number seven lives on. Sure enough. Oh, he delivered a blow there. How about that? Saw that he didn't have a lot going for himself. He runs over Terrell Freeney. And that's the part you like about this running back. When he gets to the point of impact, he's not going to stand up and get hit. He drops his shoulder. We call that running north and south. That's what football players do, run north and south. Does a good job of it as Tech is rolling. He's got three carries, 31 yards, Kevin Jones. Yeah, you thought number seven would be put away for a while after what Michael Vick did the last couple of years. There flags all over the place that time. Gary Gibson moving in there, number 95. Personal foul. He was the one that hit the quarterback, Grant Nolan, after Nolan had taken a knee. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. This will be half the distance from the goal, too. Both penalties are in force. Oof. Both penalties. Not the way Greg had envisioned it in his first home conference game next Saturday. Our Big East game of the week comes your way from Boston. BC Eagles will host what will surely be an emotional squad from West Point, a team that will be in the opponent, the opponent at Alumni Stadium. But you can bet they'll receive warm greetings from everybody there. That's next Saturday at noon Eastern, BC and Army. Jones has been the featured player in this drive here by Virginia Tech. Look, he's up 21 nothing. Final minute, first quarter. Jones got to bounce it outside. Takes three men to bring him down at about the seven yard line. Leading the charge, Ben Martin, number 29. It's early to start comparing Kevin Jones to somebody that is a star. Mm -hmm. But he has somewhat of the running style of the former L.A. Ram Indianapolis Colts Eric Dickerson. A little bit of upright and, and the ability to cut side to side and really get up into the hole. And then deliver a blow, too. The thing I like, he'll drop his shoulder. Eric Dickerson would not drop the shoulder. Jones at 6'1", 205. With Terrell Parham in motion. Fake it. Noel's got time. In zone, touchdown. Parham, the man in motion, the junior out of Bartow, Florida, his first touchdown this season. Grant Noel having a real good afternoon, his third TD hookup this afternoon. And Noel does have a tremendous amount of poise as uh, advertised from the coaching staff. Morley's point after. Money in the bank. So eight seconds to go. First quarter. And not a surprise. 28 nothing. Virginia Tech. And right now Virginia Tech's offense defense really on cruise control. Grant Knoll with tremendous time in the pocket. Number nine Terrell Parham sits down. Throw and catch. And I think everybody knew going into this thing, Virginia Tech far superior as far as skilled people, uh, speed, size up front. And the, the one thing about it, they've got to go out and play the game. That's right. Grant Knoll, very impressive. Terrell Parm out of Bartow, Florida. Had five catches a year ago. Eight, uh, what's that, six plays on that drive. Didn't take much. And I think as the season progresses, you know, the, the level of competition is going to certainly increase for Virginia Tech. And the guy that's really going to be under the microscope is number 11, Grant Knoll. I mean, you, you, you lose a player 
that, that has the type of uh, ability to make big plays and, and really change the way people try and defend you as a Michael Vick did, you know, they're going to be able to do things to Grant Knoll that, you know, they wouldn't be able to do to Michael Vick. Sidewinding kick, bounce through the end zone again. Let's go down to John Sanders. John's got an injury update for us, John. Well, the one thing Rutgers can't afford is injuries to that defensive unit, and Brian Bender went out on the previous series, and then you saw Sean Seabrooks go off. Seabrooks came back, possibly with a bruise on his back. For Brian Bender, it was a shoulder stinger, so both are still in the game, but they've got to stay healthy. They're going to be needed. You can bet on that, guys. John, thank you. Rutgers, six possession, five have started at the 20. Down 28 nothing. Final few seconds here in the first quarter. Cuban sideline ball has got Aaron Mark. First time they've hooked up this afternoon. First down yardage for the Scarlet Knights at the 34 yard line. Kevin McAdam ran about out of bounds. A 13 yard pickup. So that will do it for the first 15 minutes of play here at Rutgers Stadium, the birthplace of college football. Virginia Tech, the number nine team in the country, leading 28 to nothing. Rector Stadium, Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders in our Big East crew. 28 nothing as we start the second quarter. Virginia Tech on top. In a long first 15 minutes for Greg Shiano's ball club. Their home conference openers. That's a nice run by O'Henney. Picks up about four on the second effort. Hit down by Ben Taylor. Let's get a Sports Center update. Mike Gleason going to tell us about North Carolina and Florida State. A little bit of a surprise, right, Glee? That's right, Simsy. It's uh, North Carolina. It's not Ronald Curry either. It's Darian Durant. Play action. Downfield 20 yards. Sam Aiken. Check this out. Up and over for the touchdown. It's 7 0. Carolina on top of the Knolls, Dave. All right, thanks, Mike. Another pass that. Reception by Aaron Martin. Kevin McAdam with the uh, tackle. How about, uh, have you seen Florida State yet? I know they're loaded right. again, but well, maybe not quite not... as loaded, but they're still pretty darn good. Well, they're six in the country. They're pretty, uh, don't ever feel sorry for a Bobby Bowden. Absolutely not. You know, for <laughs> talent. You're not going to have a, a lack of talent on that football squad. They were extremely lucky last week uh, with the games being canceled as they should have been. Uh, they were to have met Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech is at a point right now where young inexperienced quarterback for Florida State they may have beat they may have beat Florida State. Jason O'Haney with a nice run and then he ran into Willie Pyle he stood him straight up and then a penalty after the fact. O'Haney looked like he was going to possibly break through. Get big yardage. And this time the penalty is against Virginia Tech and this is going to be the 15 yard variety. Going to mark it from the spot of the Rutgers 49. Dead ball, personal foul, grasping the face mask against the defense, 15 yard penalty, end of the run, automatic first down. Coaches with their hands on the hips, you want to walk the other way. And early in this game, the officials have been consuming a lot of airtime. A lot of flags on the field and and most of it by Rutgers uh, a little bit sloppy the first first quarter of this football game. Understandable when you're playing Virginia Tech first time for Rutgers in Virginia Tech territory and you saw the speed differential on that one right there and he's got some pretty good wheels. He got closed down in a heartbeat Chad Beasley leading the way and these numbers. But the only thing I can say is ouch. And the thing that really stands out right here 68 yards passing. Uh, Noel has been perfect. And the big one right there, if you're Rutgers, seven penalties, 38 yards. Points off turnovers. Points off turnovers and the big three turnovers. Something they can't do. Cubit under duress. Keeps it alive for a while and finally taken down. Got to about the 36 yard line. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Jake Housewright with the pressure, knocked him down. Glad you're with us here for Big East football. Another year as we get underway today from Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey, the number nine team of the country, Virginia Tech against Rutgers. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostic and John Sanders. Glad to have you with us as college football retakes the stage after the September 11th attack on the World Trade Center. 
Cuban. Drilled it right to House Wright. House Wright can't outrun LJ Smith, but he gets it into Rutgers territory at the 46 yard line. House Wright, a senior out of Gate City, Virginia. Very active linebacker, 6'3, 237. Coming off of reconstructive knee surgery in January. Simply a poor pass by Ryan Kubik. And the thing about it to add insult to injury, not only is it a poor pass, but a poor decision. Watch right here. Cuts across the flat, intercepts the football. Hold it right there. Come on, D! Right at the corner of your screen. Well, the helmet came off of somebody, wasn't it? LJ Smith. Lamar Cobb put a little block on Mr. Kubik. So not only do you throw the interception, you take a pretty good hit trying to cover the interception. That's right. Guys live for that play to get a piece of the quarterback after the pick. Brunel stops. Maybe loses a yard. And that is an offensive lineman's nightmare. Covering uh, intercepted passes for one reason. You know, you are used to blocking. You are not used to getting blocked. That's right. And believe me, defensive guys are going to try and ear hole you every time. And we've seen a lot of that over the years. 28 nothing Virginia Tech early on second quarter. And it seemed well talk about field position. I was about to say it seems like Virginia Tech has been on Rutgers side of the 50 all afternoon. Mm -hmm. Carlson said timeout. Well that's close to a legal. Sure motion. is. Sure is. Push the envelope. Rutgers was showing blitz. They were bringing a pretty good package. Call Pryor. Timeout, Virginia Tech. So Noel gets his timeout. 12.05 to go, second quarter. It's been all Virginia Tech here in central New Jersey. 28 0. Live, lively spirit here at Rutgers University. Even though the score is 28 0, Virginia Tech. Largely through the efforts of this young man, Grant Knoll, the quarterback, pitching a perfect game. Look at that seven for seven, 68 yards and three scores. And we've only played 18 minutes. You know what I like about him too? The body language. Doesn't seem stressed out there, relaxed, even when they've been in his face. Stood in there and thrown the ball nicely. Burnell. Got a pretty good block from Steve DeMassi right up front. Nate Cologne with yet another tackle. Nate must be coming up on about 12 tackles so far. Grant Knoll, really good first quarter plus at this uh, stage of the game. And you're really not seeing any passes, Dave, that are hard. These are easy little swing passes to the flat. Uh, he has part and sit down in the end zone. Easy throw, easy catch. And the one thing that we haven't talked about, Rutgers has not put any pressure on him today. That's right. Hasn't knocked him around any. Out of the gun. Burnell. Can't get away from Nick Cologne. Nick Cologne is having an all-conference day. And this was a, a pass that was completed. And it wasn't a thing of beauty. We talked about it earlier with Kubik. The ball stayed in the air too long. Watch right here. Here's your intended receiver. Watch how long this ball is in the air. And that's what it, closing speed. That allows the defenders to close that ground. And Burnell has no chance. First look at Vinnie Burns. First punt of the day for Virginia Tech. Hangs it up in there and taken down by Fletcher at about the 22 yard line. Rutgers fans saying, hey, how about an interference call? How about Greg Schiano out on the numbers? That is certainly uh, interfering with the uh, opportunity for Rutgers to re return the punt or catch the punt if, in fact, uh, the same thing was called against them earlier in the game. That's what makes the coaches mad. You know, if you're going to officiate the game, just be consistent with it. Chiano is just livid. 30 yards on the punt. It's really our first look at Greg Chiano. He is very animated during the course yes, of the sir. game. Rutgers with no huddle from their own 22. Oh, Ricky Cook taken down quickly. Never really got a chance to get his feet moving. And had good penetration on that from the D line. The DB, Pugh, Beasley, Cobb. 
preseason ranking, they say this is the fourth to fifth best defense in the country. If I see one that's any better. Oh, man, run. And, and they're talking, <laughs> they're talking that there may be one in South Florida at the University of Miami. Try to get it outside. And they do. Trey's Moses, his first catch of the day. Third of the season. Kevin McAdam on the stop for Virginia Tech. And this is a play they really like. You know, just throw the ball out in the flat. We talk about yards after the catch. This is really a sweep. This is the way the West Coast offense runs their sweep. Throw the ball out in the flat. Put the, put the ball in the hands of guys that can make things happen. Stack triple receivers to the right. First down as they make the completion outside. And Bud Foster watches Jerry Andre get that catch for Rutgers. It's Bud Foster, defensive coordinator for the Hokies. One of those strange formations, we used to call it totem, when three wide receivers would be in a line. And what that's done for one reason, one to dis, uh, misdirect, the second to block. Busted play, Cubit went to a sprint draw to the right side and back went the other way. Darius Monroe with the tackle now, a penalty flag back here in the secondary. Kevin McAdam involved along with Larry Austin. For Virginia Tech, wonder if there was some Extra commentary being dealt out. Chris Loomis was out there as well. Wide receiver for Rutgers. And this one's going to be walked off against the Hokies. Dead ball. Personal foul against the defense. 15 yard penalty. Into the run. Automatic. First down. Well, pretty good bet it was against McAdam because Billy Hardy came in to replace him at the strong safety spot for Virginia Tech. And Loomis was just downfield blocking. And I think as the play concluded, uh, McAdam put a little shot under his chin. There's Bill Cubitt, offensive coordinator. Ryan Cubitt with a pump and go, got a man down there. And tried to get it to Aaron Martin running down the sideline. And D'Angelo Hall covering on the play for Virginia Tech. And the problem is that you see that piece of paper in his left hand. He's not finding anything that's working. I mean, and, and it's it's got a front and it's got a back. It needs to be, it needs to be a book. True enough. Cubit 7 of 13 for 49. He's got three picks. That's the big number right there. Three interceptions. Get it to Cook on the outside. And Cook taken down by Brian Welch. Game of about three. Again, you cannot make light of the fact or ignore the fact that this is one of the quickest teams you're going to see defensively. When you talk about recruiting New Jersey, Ricky Cook is one of those guys that kept it home. You're talking about a guy that's put together. Mm -hmm. He's got some legs, that, you know, Earl Campbell type. Absolutely. 6'1, 235, a freshman. Cubit, going sideline, got a man open, runs out of bounds. Josh Hobbs, the junior from Somerville, New Jersey, and Cubit took a pounding again. D'Angelo Hall. Boundary corner came up and unloaded. Coles Colas got him too, number 99. I think what Bud Foster was so upset about, uh, toward the end of that play, you could see an illegal chop block. Uh, offensive tackle had the end engaged, tight end cutting. That's a no no. Bars punt so far, 35 and 31 yards. Andre Davis makes the fair catch at the 11. And no penalty flags on the field. We've got a timeout on the field. 9.25 to go second quarter. It's all Virginia Tech after that 40-yard punt. It's 28-0 Tech. Virginia Tech, four scores on the board. 28-0 over Rutgers. 9.25 to go here in the second quarter. And this is the worst starting position for the Hokies this afternoon from their own 12. Ferguson back in at fullback. Good stick. 
by Seabrooks on the blitz for Rutgers. Uh, let's go down to John Sanders standing by with Rutgers AD Bob Mulcahy. And Bob happy to have you with us here a very moving ceremony prior to the game that we all saw but the effort here by the Department of Athletics to raise money uh, for the disaster aid for Red Cross and also for the New York City firefighters. Uh, John it, everybody knows we're so close to the disaster and so many people in New Jersey have been affected by it. The athletic department took the block R put the stars and stripes and the colors into it and we're uh, selling it all throughout the season and the proceeds to go to the efforts. Uh, the relief funds for the firefighters, the policemen, and the EMS people in uh, New York City. As you can see from the pr beginning of the game, some of our people have also been over there as part of the rescue. Thank you. It is an effort that is not just today, though, that will continue throughout the regular season. Uh, different members of your athletic teams will be participating, right? Yes, today the gymnastics team is doing it. It depends who's not in season and who's here to do it. And if we get a chance when we come back, we can show you the the R, the window sticker that uh, for three dollars donation, the fans can get that, and we will be finishing up here in just a second. Hang on, Bob. All right, John. Thank you very much. Get back to you in a second. No, under a little bit of pressure. Oh, almost picked off. Opportunity lost by Tony Berry. Let's get back to John. And one more time, this is what we're talking about, Bob. Certainly a, a moving tribute today and the effort that I know is going to continue here at Rutgers. Well, we're so affected by it that we have no choice, really, if you're an American. Thank you. Bob Mulcahy, who is the director of athletics here at the Rutgers University. Let's continue with the football game. Men? All right, John, thank you. Brent Knoll, that was his first incomplete pass of the afternoon. Almost got a block. In fact, Tony Berry might have gotten a piece of that punt by Vinnie Burns, which goes out of bounds at the Virginia Tech 48 yard line. So, not a great punt there. Covers just 34 yards by Vinnie Burns. Nonetheless, Virginia Tech in the lead, 28 0. See what Rutgers has on this next offensive possession when we come back. That revolutionary spirit living here at Rutgers, Central New Jersey and Piscataway, about halfway between New York City and Philadelphia. Good crowd on hand, expected about 25, 30,000. This ballpark holds 40,000. Rutgers starting from its best field position all afternoon. Cuban picked off by, oh, they wiped it off. I thought that was a good effort by Taylor. Thought he had it. And he thinks it's a good effort. I'm not sure it's a good call. It looked like his hands were underneath the ball. Tell you what, this guy is everywhere. What would you liken him to? I mean, he's he's got good size. He's, he's mobile. He hits. Six. He looks a little bit like Zach Thomas. Mm -hmm. You know, six foot, six foot two, 235, 240 pounds. Boy, that's an interception. Ooh, yeah, that is a pick. That's a pick. That's an interception. <laughs> we get the second look at it. The, Officials don't, but that was a pick. But the thing about it, the linesman has got a great position. He was right there. He's standing right on top of the yeah. play. These officials have not had their best half of football. Third down, about five for Rutgers. Oh, Henny, nine carries, 33 yards, 10 carries. Added to that second effort will not get him the first down. The Willie one, Pyle prevented that. One thing you see from Virginia Tech, they're going to come up and attack the football. But when the first person makes contact with the running back, look at the number of arms trying to strip the ball. That is something that is taught. Bud Foster and his defensive staff do a tremendous job with turnovers, but they spend a lot of time in, you know, trying to make that happen. Rector's going to go for it. Why not? You're down 28 nothing. But Ed Jordan in an extra tight end. Yes, he is the son of Ed Jordan, a basketball player. A great one point guard here at Rutgers. That's it in motion right now. Oh, Henny close to the first down, but I don't think he got it. I don't I think he's gonna be about three inches short. Try to go on a quick quick uh, snap count. I think he's gonna be left short. And indeed that is the story. Virginia Tech has held. Why, why not? You go for it, right? When well, you're down 28 nothing, and you, you know you need to make something happen positive offensively. I like the call. And you, 
you know, you're at home, you're playing in front of your crowd. And the key is if you're not good enough to gain a yard and a half or two yards, you probably don't deserve to be in it anyway. So lay the cards out on the table and see what we've got. Nice play by Lamar Cobb coming in from his defensive end position. That's Davis in motion. Wayne Ward. Second effort picked up about three yards. Raheem Orr was there, among others, for Rutgers, along with Billy Tillich, number 96. And as you look at this game so far, Dave, this has really been a, a, a case of Rutgers as being their own enemy. Uh, the big play happening, the batted ball that uh, was intercepted by Brian Welch, the fumble recovery by Willie Powell, the 55-yard run by Burnell. You know what? You know, you take three or four or five plays out of the game, Rutgers has not played that poorly. Right. Big difference at the quarterback position. No doubt about it. Nola Jr. gets hit there, pitches out to Ward. Ward with blocking the room and second effort. Something we've been saying all afternoon, thrown out of bounds by Billy Tullett. But he picks up the first down in Rutgers territory. They're going to mark his progress. Let's see, at the 44-yard line, a gain of 16. And so often you talk about the success of a running back. The one thing you've got to have, you've got to have people that are willing to block. On, wide D. receivers, tight ends. Watch the blocking he gets right here. Freeze it right there. This is a tremendous block right there. Browning win, number 93. Another block on the edge by the All-American Andre Davis. This is what makes big runs. The blitz, Jones runs right into it, picks up about three. Wow, did you see that last surge there by number 57, Anthony Davis. One of those things we talked about yesterday. You're standing around a pile, just looking, you're gonna get hit by this Virginia Tech old line. And Anthony Davis is 324 pounds, folks. Uh, don't stand around the pile, no. Don't be anywhere near the pile. The only thing you can get is hurt. Anthony Davis late did his first block in a secondary block late and just lit up a DP. There he is. Here's the theory behind the piles. Either get in the pile or get away from <laughs> That's it. Come on, Red. Come on, Red. Jones, five carries for 34 yards. Second down. Buddy. Good protection for Noah. Man over the middle. Tight end. He's got number 93 Browning win. Nate Cologne with the stop. Browning win. Senior out of Jonesville, Virginia with the Lehigh School. Good, tough blocker. Entered the season with 15 of his 16 catches last year. Went for first downs. And so did this one. Right here. You know what? If you block for me, Ricky Bustle says, I will throw the ball to you. Browning win is running a little four, pass, four route there. And the thing you like about, you know, two tight ends. Slovakowski and Wint very deep at the tight end position. Your quarterback has all day in the pocket to throw the ball. Here's Noel. He's got Andre Davis. At some point, they got to go to him, you'd think. Jones got a good block to the edge. Turns on the juice. Picks up about eight. Fullback Wayne Briggs led the way. Jeremy Campbell on the stop for Rutgers. And so often uh, in past years, everybody's talked about the Virginia Tech defense and their Virginia Tech uh, special teams. And until the last couple of years, I mean, it was Michael Vick. He was the only part of the offense you really heard about. I'll tell you what, they've got a very talented offensive line. Obviously, Virginia Tech is very good this year. I think they have the opportunity to be exceptional in 2002. Got a lot of returning starters coming back. Second down and three from the Rutgers 18. Jones. Oh, he took a good lick there by Seabrooks. But Jones appeared to have gotten the first down. I tell you what, Jones took a shot. He may be knocked out. Mm -hmm. You can see his head pop back. Yeah, got his attention, didn't he? Boy, Seabrooks had one, took it, and delivered it. We talked about the career start for this offensive line. You know, and don't be misled. Uh, one thing about it, these guys, you three, three, all these threes. The one thing, to get the veteran guy in there, DeMassey making his 17th start. Ricky Bustle and Frank Beamer have the theory we're going to play a lot of people up front. You're going to see their second team offensive line in and out of the game. So just because the number of stars doesn't mean that they're not a veteran group of linemen. Wayne Ward has replaced Jones who's shaking up on the sideline. First and 10 from the 15. Blitz coming. Seabrooks overran it. But he had some help. Loose ball. And it was covered by number 43, Doug Eastlick. It's a good pressure by Alfred Peterson. And I'm really surprised the officials did not blow that ball down. As we know, and once again, we got another one hurt. The ground cannot cause a fumble. 
Ward cuts it back right there. Ball was down. Yeah, it was loose. Looked like his leg was down before he hit the ground. So Ward out of Plant City, Florida, 5'11", 209. He's a senior. Block two punts. Twice uh, conference special team player of the week last season. And with the injury to Lee Suggs, how big is the Kevin Jones recruiting uh, mm -hmm. war? I mean, just winning him, taking him away from Penn State. This is a young man, Kevin Jones, we're speaking of, that's going to carry the ball a lot in 2001. And it also speaks volumes for a guy like Keith Burnell. Coming into the season, obviously, Suggs was going to be the feature back. Yes. And it tells you how well he prepared during the offseason in the weight room, conditioning, to be able to step in there and be a starter. Lee Suggs injured a couple of weeks ago against uh, Connecticut. There's temperature 72 degrees. Start out very humid. See 93 percent still is pretty humid. Seven uh, miles per hour out of the southwest. Partly sunny. Very cloudy this morning when we got up. Wayne Ward gets up and leaves under his own power. Lee Suggs. Look what they are missing in terms of productivity. 1,207 yards from a year ago. Well, right here, Dave, you take out 28 touchdowns. And, and the thing about him, as many times as he carried the ball, no fumbles. No fumbles. Jones is back in. Eastlick is the up back. Play at. Throw it to the tight end. Cologne with a good play. Nate Cologne has been outstanding this afternoon. Junior from Granville, Pennsylvania. Check that Granville, Ohio. Once again, a lot of time in the pocket. I don't know. He might have been there a little bit early, but no harm, no foul. Yeah. Ball may have been a tick late, too. Tight end was open. Called Nate's name a lot this afternoon. He's got to be coming up on a 20 tackle day already. Grant Noll, 9 of 11, 77 yards and three scores. Nine in the box, they drop two. Now four. Knowles got time. It flushed out. Seabrooks is there to bring him down. Got back close to the original line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring on the kick team. And this is one of those we call a, a coverage sack. Freeze it right there. Plenty of time. See your quarterback standing back here. He's got a good pocket, can see the field. Good job of the defense covering the wide receivers. And once once you, you, you have a clock in your mind, Dave, once that clock goes off, it's time for the quarterback to run. 33-yard attempt by Worley is two of five on the season, and he hooked that one badly to the left. Never had a chance. Good defensive stand by the Rector Scarlet Knights. Paul Farrar, the uh, defensive coordinator for Rutgers, excited about his team's uh, effort on the field. As well he should be. Grant Knoll gets a chance to think about it for a while. 2 8 to go. First half. They're 28 0 Virginia Tech. Welcome back, everybody. Piscataway, New Jersey, the scene today for Big East football. As we begin our 2001 season here. On ESPN Plus, Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders with him. Coming up, the Discover Card Halftime Report. Stay with us. Get you updated on other happenings in college football. Comes Rutgers from the 20. O'Henny. Maybe a gain of a yard. Nathaniel Adibi with the tackle. The sophomore out of Hampton, Virginia. And don't forget, coming up next week, the nation goes on as the president has asked. And so does our schedule here on the Big East Network. We're in Boston next Saturday. BC Eagles host what is truly one of America's teams, the Black Knights of Army. That's next Saturday, noon Eastern, Big East football from ESPN+. Plus. On Brave Old Army team, one of the great fight songs in college football. Well, Henny slams in there. Not much. Brian Welch. Number 34 is there to greet him. This is a tough, hard-nosed defensive end. And they've got a great compliment. They've got two guys inside in Chad Beasley and David Pugh. 
and, and mainly Beasley is probably a, like a, a, a space eater. You know, he eats up a lot of space and consumes a lot of people. Pew moves the pocket. Then they got the two defensive ends with tremendous athleticism and speed. A DB and Cobb. And then they've got a linebacking core led by Taylor and House, right? I mean, and, and they've got veterans in the secondary. Where is the weakness? Yeah. Nine returning starters. Nine guys on that defense that will, that will run sub 4 6 40. That's, really that's fast. Yes, indeed. Not too much relief. Dion Provit is not too shabby either. <laughs> Number three, the other one of the outside linebackers. Just a sophomore. Good out to John Sanders. An update on Wayne Ward's situation. How's he doing, John? Well, not too well. You saw him leave the field, and the diagnosis is bruised ribs. And with that kind of an injury and this kind of lead, you'd have to think that there's no need for him to go back out there. That's a good point, John. And, and Jeff and I were just talking about Frank Beamer's decision a couple of weeks ago to leave Lee Suggs in a game, and Lee came out and he's done for the season. So you can bet uh, Frank will be conservative today, to say the least. Rutgers one of seven on third down situations right now third and seven at the 23. Cuban pump and go sideline lot of contact and a penalty flag. Ron yell Whitaker on the coverage he was running stride for stride with Josh Hobbs. And that was really a play that they're going to call interference on that. Whitaker had no need to try and get his hands on anybody. Your sideline is your friend. <laughs> but lost his gun. You know that's what? how that's, bad that's he is. Bad. When you get so upset. That's that the against the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. How upset does your defensive coordinator, Bud Foster, get? Watch this, folks. We talked about it. The sideline is your friend. I'm not sure that ball is catchable by the receiver for one simple reason. He is out of bounds. Check out close to the sideline. He's got both of his feet out of bounds, folks. Bud Foster lost his gum on that one. Hope he's got a re-up. In trouble. Down he goes. Sacked by Chad Beasley. We talked about the team speed. How often do you see a 290 pound defensive tackle running down a quarterback with ease. I mean it wasn't a contest and I played with uh, with Chad's father in Washington for a couple of years Tom Beasley and former Virginia Tech great had some good years with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers picked up some jewelry there picked up a another piece of jewelry with, with us in guys? Washington. Tell you what, it comes from good stock Tom Beasley good you know as good a person as you want to meet. Well, they've done pretty uh, pretty well at Virginia Tech jewelry wise eight straight bowl games. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> Fr Frank is running out of fingers. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yo Frank hey good to see you. my goodness where did you get that. Oh man. <laughs> Gator Bowl last season and you talk about Rutgers uh, trying to rebuild a program remember back in 1992 they were trying to run Frank Beamer out of Blacksburg and, and he's an alum. He's a homeboy. <laughs> Well, they're going to get it done here. And I, the one comment I like from Greg Schiano, we're going to build a foundation and it's going to be on stones. He said, we're not going to build anything on stilts. He said, mm -hmm. when we rebuild this program, it's going to last the long haul. And, you know, he's talking about competing for national championships. That's a little bit far fetched right now to me. But, you know, Bud Wilkinson, the former Oklahoma coach, had one comment. He said, you've got to have a dream to have a dream come true. Bingo. Second down and 15 from the 33. They rush four. Cuba hangs in. They throw short to LJ Smith to the 35 yard line, where he's brought down by Ben Taylor. Let's get some more on Greg Seattle. Here's uh, John Sanders. Well, you talk about the tradition that he is trying to build here at Rutgers University, and uh, Rutgers is the birthplace of college football. They have started a new tradition where the fans line up as the players arrive at the stadium, at Rutgers Stadium, and led by their coach, they go up and touch the statue that's dedicated to that first game back in 1869. All part of the tradition that they are trying to build and begin here at Rutgers University. Even after 132 years, they still need to establish a football tradition. Men, sure enough. Thanks, John. Oh, Henny with a nice run. Picked up about eight. Set up a third and five. And this is a, just a fabulous facility. And that was one of the things Shannon was talking about. 
They have great facilities here. This ballpark, if you're thinking down the road, has plenty of room to expand. They hold about 42 and change. It's basically, it's a smaller version. It's like uh, the little brother of Giant Stadium. Well, here's the deal. Let's fill this part of the stadium up first. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to do this. This is a guy, when you sit down and meet with him and talk, you know, face to face, he has strong convictions in what he says. And, and I'm convinced he's been in enough programs. He knows what it takes oh, to build absolutely. a champion. And he's going about it right by staying in the state of New Jersey to try and find his talent. They've hit every high school uh, program in New Jersey. He said he went to every high school in the oh, state of New Jersey. Good Lord. I mean, You're talking about time away from the house. Yes, sir. And don't forget, was it North? Uh, New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the union. And he's got a niche down there in South Florida. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. And last time I've checked, Florida turned out a few good college football players. Hey. Remember, uh, is uh, the state of records from New Jersey. Nine of the 11 assistant coaches. Proofs, verbals, are in good shape. Remember, one a guy we've always admired, Don Millen. He did a lot of scouting down in Florida for West Virginia. Penalty flag, and there's uh, multiple, multiple uh, penalties on that one. Calling it against Rutgers, however. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution, five yard penalty. The team has to give the defensive team at least three seconds by rule. Good explanation by our head official, Penn Wagers. You talk about mass that was, confusion. That was a scramble. People in, people out. Put a person in motion. Too, right? Put a person yeah, in yeah. motion. Tell you what, I did not realize the kicking game had become this specialized. <laughs> Whatever edge you can get. And no one, he knows Frank too. He figures, hey, there's not too many places where I, you know, I might have an edge. Let me see if I can get one here. Mike Barr will get a chance to do it again. Is there any limit? Is, you, you've got to have at least three seconds for the defensive team mm -hmm. to get set up. Mm -hmm. After a minute, is the play null and void? <laughs> <laughs> Mike's kept him honest. He's got to complete a pass throw. Good kick. As he gets some corner. Hey, how about that? This is going to be on about the one inch line. Not only does that thing look like it was just fired from one of those, you know, one of those judge guns that can hit. They're going to say it when it hit the, uh, hit the pylon, hit the pylon for a touchback, a 56 yard punt. Oh boy, I thought he had That's it. That's awfully close. Sure enough. Thought he had a good old fashioned coffin corner. But I like the call for one reason. The pylon is on the, the goal line. Mm -hmm. And anything that breaks the goal line is in the end zone. That's correct. Correct call by the officials. You know, these guys do get it right occasionally. By the way, from uh, your old line of work, I was glad to see uh, the NFL regulars came back. Know some of those guys. And I saw a couple of Big East officials during the preseason. Uh, with the Washington Redskins. What'd they say? Well, a little I'm different, sure huh? They were uncomfortable uh, yeah, you know, going in there and, and taking the jobs of the regulars, but you know, somebody's got to do the job. Sure, I hear you. Grant Knoll. What a first half. Three touchdown passes. At one point he was a perfect six for uh, seven for seven, 67 yards and three touchdowns. Taking advantage of a few miscues by Rutgers. And let's go down to John Sanders standing by with Frank Beamer. First half coach you were able to put some points on the board early. What are your overall thoughts. Well I think right now we're not playing good enough. Uh, you know the second quarter hadn't been a very good quarter for us and, and uh, we're going to talk about it right here in just a minute. All right. Good luck coach. Frank Beamer head coach of the Hokies of Virginia Tech and we are at halftime gentlemen back upstairs to you. John thank you very much. We've got 30 minutes of football in the books here at Rutgers University, the birthplace of college football. It's been all Hokies this afternoon. And coming up, Mike Gleason joins us with our discussion. Welcome back. We're at halftime. 28 nothing Hokies over the Scarlet Knights here at Piscataway, New Jersey. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic with you. And uh, Virginia Tech up 28 nothing, but really hasn't dominated the way the score would indicate. It's been a play of big games for them. The uh, batted ball for the interception by Brian Welch early. Uh, obviously, Burnell with the big run. 
I'm sure Frank Beamer, after looking at his tone, was not happy with the way his team played the first half. Yeah, good bet. Pretty good bet on that indeed. We'll take more of a, a time out here when we come back. Second half action here from Rutgers, where the Scarlet Knights trail at 28 0 to Virginia Tech. We are ready for some football here. Second half action. Big East football as we get our 2001 campaign. 28 0. The Hokies over the Scarlet Knights. And Rutgers will kick it off. Rutgers in the first half, in terms of possessing the ball, interception, fumble, punt, interception, punt, interception, punt. Lost it on downs with a punt. Dangerous return man right here is number 12, Richard Johnson. But they go short, and Willis, one of their wideouts, returns it to about the 38 yard line. Brought down on that play by Ravon Anderson. As we take a look at our Discover card, first half highlights. Jeff Bostic, it's on yours. Second play of the game, batted ball by Nathaniel Adibi. Brian Welch gives Virginia Tech an excellent field position at the one yard line. Once again, ball thrown up in the air, one of the three interceptions. And it was really, Dave, a play of a half of big plays. Burnell with a 55 yard run. You could tell in, in Frank Beamer's voice, he was not happy the way this team performed the first half. No throws and overthrows his tight end. Slowakowski, Tony Berry covered for Rutgers. Halftime stats 203 to 111 in total yards. Look at the penalties, 8 for 43 for Rutgers. And this would be the alarming thing for Virginia Tech 203 yards of offense. Remember, they had 163 yards after the first quarter. All 28 points scored in the first quarter for Virginia Tech. Second down from the 39. Brunel, oh, good stick by Seabrooks. But how about the second, third, and fourth effort? Torrent Hagee finally brought him down. Seabrooks, number 23rd, delivered a pretty good leg. And the big left tackle, number 57, Anthony Davis. You know what? I have been more impressed in, in one half of football defensively. What a big hit by Seabrooks, but tremendous balance. You see Burnell using his hand. That's a big time collision. That's second, third, and fourth tackle. Getting back to the original part, number 57, the big offensive tackle, Anthony Davis. Looked like he got his legs rolled up in that pile up. Nine carries, 64 yards, and no. Look confused by what was in front of him. Didn't have the right play call. And you can see Anthony Davis, the big left tackle, limping a little bit. He got caught at the end of that play, and, and Burnell kind of fell into the back of his mm -hmm. legs. I'm sure that uh, Frank Beamer and you see Billy Hike, the uh, running back coach, not happy with burning this time out early into the third quarter. Absolutely not. Anthony Davis is thrilled about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we talk and we're only 54 seconds in. We talk about the uh, World Trade Center, uh, uh, you know, September 11th. This guy right here, Billy Hyde, number right there, uh, the running back coach, his uh, nephew was in the Trade Center when the uh, first plane hit it. Fortunately, uh, he was able to get out. And it's, it's amazing when, when you, you know, you're seeing two different schools from Blacksburg and uh, obviously Rutgers from here in New Jersey. How many people had someone that they knew. Oh yeah. Someone that you know got in and got out of that thing. You know, fortunately. But well, in that light, we spoke with Frank Beamer about uh, how his team reacted to the World Trade Center attack. And here's uh, Frank's comments. We had about five people all together that had family or relatives that uh, were involved either in the Pentagon or the, the World Trade Center, and. Uh, yeah, I think it has. Uh, and then I, I just think uh, everyone, whether they had family involved or not, uh, it's just uh, as you watch TV and you see all the pain and suffering, I, I think everyone's been touched. Indeed, and uh, touched up right there, Sean Witten, but he picks up the first down, covered by Tony Berry. Witten had a fumble back in the second possession for Virginia Tech in the first quarter. But Virginia Tech this afternoon. Their first possession, a touchdown, fumble, followed by three straight touchdowns. And then they punted twice, missed the field goal, and then time ran out at the end of the first half. First and ten for the Hokies. 
at the Rutgers 48. Rolls got time. Unloads to Andre Davis. Why? Oh, knocked down by Tony Berry. Didn't get enough air on it. To get it up in the air a little bit more, Davis walks in for six. Andre Davis is about three yards behind Barry. This is a ball that Grant Knoll would love to have back. Man-to-man -man coverage. Look at the cushion, number one. You know what? This ball is a touchdown, folks. Davis is about four yards behind Barry. The ball is underthrown. These are the type of balls that are hard to throw, Dave. You know mm -hmm. you've got a receiver wide open. You just got to lay it up there and give it some air. Look at it. Look at look at Andre Davis's reaction at the end of the play. Play clock to two to one. They get it off. This is the play that Noel switched to Parham with the catch and quickly brought down by Dwayne Thompson. What a stark difference in watching a Grant Noel thrown ball and how long it stays in the air as opposed to the person that he replaced. Michael Vick, the darts with a lot of juice on him. Look how easy he throws this football. I mean, it's kind of an effortless, slow arm motion. And not that Michael Vick had a quick arm motion, he just threw the ball hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm living in Atlanta and I, I see Michael a couple of times and even the receivers at the pro level are complaining about that, that RPM speed. Of, hey man, uh, take a little off. Noel gonna try to cut it back, not a good decision. Torrentek made a big play for Rutgers. Number six. Bring some enthusiasm here to Rutgers. They had 28 nothing. It's been few and far between. And really a strange play call. You know, it's third down and eight. You know, put the ball in the hand of the running back. The quarterback is typically there. This is not Michael Vick. That's uh, so true. Here's the punt by Burns. Del Rico Fletcher with the fair catch at about the seven yard line. Muffed it momentarily, but he was able to recover. 12-15 to go, third period, 28-0 Virginia Tech. We'll be back with more from Rutgers in a moment. First and 10 for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights as we return here to Piscataway, New Jersey with everyone remembering what has happened to this country and trying to return to normalcy here. How about Ben Taylor? Pretty normal play for him as he stops Jason O'Henney. Time now for our Sitgo We Know You. Brought to you by Sitgo, proud to support today's athletes. And today it's Marco Battaglia. Rutgers tight end from 92 to 95, consensus All-American in 95, 171 catches, a school record, second round draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals. Good man, too, Marco Battaglia. He was a go-to guy here at Rutgers. Cubit outside, and Fletcher did well to maintain, to make that catch. Dion Provit on the coverage for Virginia Tech. And this is where Greg Schiano is going to find out about his football team, a game that they're down 28 nothing, playing the ninth ranked team in the country. He will look at this tape, and the thing that he wants to see, which everybody can give, is effort. That's what he's looking for, effort and improvement. Third and 14. Drive started at the eighth, they're marching backwards. They run a draw, does he get on the end zone? No, he doesn't. Oh boy, he got a break. Virginia Tech thought they had a safety. David Pugh was there. And they give O'Henney progress to about the one foot line. It is amazing to me how quick David Pugh is for a guy 275 pounds. Plays with tremendous pad level. And the one thing that he does that, that a guy like, uh, you know, Chad Beasley doesn't, he creates so much penetration. See the, the push up front. This is close to a safety, folks. Sure enough, and how about Mike Barr? They're gonna come after him. Standing at the back of the end zone. He's got no margin of uh, error here at all. Fifth punt, averaging 40.8 per, uh, per punt. Gets rid of it. Davis from the 37. Davis, loose ball, picked up. It was picked up by Virginia Tech. Eric Green got it. Sean Seabrooks on the final stop. But there's a dangerous proposition. Andre Davis catching the ball with momentum. 
and heading upfield deep in your territory already. 37 yards in the punt, but Tech still in good shape. They lead by four scores. Twenty-eight nothing Virginia Tech. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders with you. In Piscataway, New Jersey. College football back in full force. After the World Trade Center attack. Virginia Tech scored touchdowns on four of its five drives. No TDs in its last five possessions. Davis in motion. Play action. Slip the back out there. That's Ferguson. Picks up about 10, maybe 11. Brought down by Gary Brackett. Garrett Ferguson's best kept secret in the nation is a fullback. This is one guy that, you know, he does everything he wants to. He'll block, he'll run the ball if you'll give it to him. Great guy coming out of the backfield to catch the ball. Came to Virginia Tech as a walk on, folks. Is that wild? You talk about hard work. They've got a couple of them in that huddle. Uh, their starting center, DeMassey, was also a walk on. That's right. So if there are young kids out there that, you know, you're not having colleges beat down your door, you know, go to school, play football, and, you know, who you knows what's going to happen? You never know. Ferguson was the uh, MVP of the spring game. He is uh, the complete fullback. Three-time winner of Virginia Tech's Excalibur Award, their highest strength and conditioning honor as well. And he looks it. Yes, he does. <laughs> I don't think I was ever in shape like that. I, boy, ditto. I got tired walking up these stairs today. Right. From the field <laughs> up to the booth. Yes, indeed. Can we make it a little steeper for you, sir? They run Jones. Oh, he almost broke it. Got tripped up. Ryan Neal got a piece and tripped him up. And let's go down to John Sanders. And John, you had a chance to see that Lee Suggs injury a couple of weeks ago. I did. And of course, everybody talked about the absence of Michael Vick. But hey, you've got Lee Suggs who led the nation in scoring back. Well, he went down early in the third quarter of the first game of the season. The game was played in Blacksburg. It was against the University of Connecticut. And if you take a look at it, and I'm sure that both of you have, it doesn't appear that much happens at all. But if you take another look at this angle, you can see him go down. He underwent the surgery on September the 14th. He had already gotten off to a terrific start in just the first two and a half quarters of that game. So the loss there is very big as far as Tech is concerned, because a lot of people felt that Grant Noll would just be able to turn and hand the ball off, wouldn't have to worry too much about making things happen himself. Some of that has changed, but as you guys have pointed out, they've got some other guys who can tote that leather as well. Mm -hmm. John, thank you. Well, a one-two punch that is replacing Lee Suggs. Not too bad. Very good numbers, uh, combining for 112 yards, over six yards per carry, one touchdown. And the thing about Lee Suggs, I know he's at home watching this game. He is going through the toughest stage as a football player. Probably never been hurt before. Probably never had surgery before. And believe me, a knee surgery is something that will test your uh, your will. Mm -hmm. You're on crutches for two, three weeks at a time, four weeks maybe. Uh, and the big thing is allowing everything that was repaired to heal. And then you have to be dedicated to the rehabilitation that it demands to get back out on the field. 38 yard attempt coming up here by Carter Worley missed on a 33 yarder. The first half was wide to the left. This one plenty of foot and it's good. So Carter Worley now three out of six on this season increases the lead for Virginia Tech to 31 to nothing here at Rutgers 8 12 to go third quarter. Well after a span of almost 22 minutes of play Virginia Tech back on the board here they got a field goal from Worley from 38 yards out he's one for two on the day three for six on the season Jones deep to receive the muller of kickoff here and John has had a spectacular day. So many of these kicks have gone just like this. Jones might be a little frustrated <laughs> in the afternoon. Why do we do this? Why don't they just put the ball on the 20-yard <laughs> yeah, <right>. line? <laughs> Let's take a look now. Take a moment to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. Yeah, just put the ball on the 20-yard line. It's you like know, it keeps it keeps the guys from Virginia Tech from running 75 yards. Yeah, for nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's 
It's all about kickers in this game. That's why they call it football. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> right. <laughs> Here we go, Ryan Cubitt, first and 10 from the 20. Penalty flag, sideline ball, and no. It's not caught there by Josh Hobbs, the junior from Somerville, New Jersey. And let's go to Mike Gleason, our Sports Center update. Take a look at the Florida State North Carolina game. Well, Simsy, the Knolls are 11. Oh, indeed, 17 9. That draws out a harmoniously uh, wow. Goodness gracious. And Georgia Tech has to be, uh, you know, not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the offensive team. Five yard penalty. We play first down. Georgia Tech thought they could knock off Florida State, but nobody would have picked John Bunning in the uh, North Carolina Tar Heels to do it. Not at all. Like uh, Mike said, 11 0 and 1 in the series. I mean, they've just been outscored about 3 or 4 to 1 in the series of recent uh, note. Just hadn't been pretty, but getting it done today. Oh, Henny. Swarmed under. Looked like he had some business to do, but taken down by Taylor. He's had a fantastic afternoon. If you're just joining us, look at the speed of this defensive unit. And look what he does. He takes LJ Smith. Lucky he didn't get called for pushing in the back. Mm -hmm. He takes LJ Smith, grabs him with his hands, throws him behind him. Now that's what you do. That's why you spend all that time in the weight room. You take 235 pound tight ends and just throw them around like a loaf of bread. Old lady. Cuban as they rush four. Barely gets out of it alive. Got a man open ball hangs in the air. That's a great interception. That is outstanding by Billy Hardy the junior from Winter Haven Florida. The transfer from Florida Southern played soccer over there. But that was a fabulous athletic performance. We talked about the speed and you saw the closing speed right there. It looked like when uh, Ryan Kubik threw this ball, it was going to be a tremendously big play. He eludes the rush by uh, David Beasley and Chad Pugh. Takes a shot late. Once again, the ball hangs up into the air. Looks like a reception. Looks like an up interception. Oh. Oh, Great closing cool. speed. That is marvelous. Short burst that you would use in soccer, too. Noel still in the game, up 31 nothing. throws to Davis. They have really not gone after him, not featured him much in the offense today. They haven't had to. And I think it's almost at a point now where Virginia Tech needs to get the uh, Andre Davises, the Grant Knoll. Uh, you know, get some of your running, empty your bench. And they got enough good people over there, too. And, and learn from one thing. And, and hindsight is always 20-20. Uh, should have Lee Suggs been in the game midway through the third quarter? Uh, Blown out Connecticut. When it was uh, certainly out of hand. They've got they've got bigger games in the schedule than, than right here at uh, Rutgers this afternoon. Twelve possessions, six have started in Rutgers territory. Goodness. Brunel, good pursuit that time by Rutgers. He doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Strung it out very well. You can see a marked improvement on the physical part of the ball up front, the front seven for, for Rutgers defense just this afternoon. Watch all these guys right in here. This area right here. Swarming to the football. Watch the number of red hats getting to the football. One, two, three. And that's what Greg Schiano would like to see his football team the second half. They lost the first half 28 nothing. How do we do in the last 30 minutes? Nine in a box right now. Out of the gun. Davis, all hands, great catch. First down to the 34. He beat Tony Berry on the slant. Good read. And we've got an injured Scarlet Knight on the 46-yard uh, line. Doesn't Davis look taller than 6'1"? All of their receivers look taller. No, I mean, Wilford that just came into the football game, number 19, has got to be 6'6". Six six. Yeah, they got him at 6'5". I mean, that's a good-looking core of receivers. Well, this is what you like with your quarterback standing in the pocket, holding the ball to the last second. But what a tremendous job of concentration and catching the ball with your hands. So many guys. How many times have we said this over the years with the body catch? You'll never make it at the next level. That's for sure. If you do not use your hand. Guy named Rice, comma, J. Pretty good, uh, pretty good job. Sean Seabrooks is the injured Scarlet Knight. 
And that was the first catch by Davis this afternoon. It was good for 13 yards. Speaking of Jerry Rice, are you surprised that he uh, opted not to uh, retire after uh, San Francisco? I thought he would hang him, but uh, he's very determined. I've seen some of those interviews. He says, hey, man, I could still get it done. And you know how he's maniacal in terms of being, you know, getting in shape. Well, he is, he is like a guy that I was fortunate to play with. Art Monk was a uh, fitness freak. I mean, track background, and, and Art would literally, in his eighth, ninth, tenth year, there would be kids that would be coming into the National Football League, track guys, mm -hmm. you know, defensive backs, running backs, and they'd work out with Art about three times. Yeah, that'd be and it. And they'd stop. <laughs> Next Saturday, our Big East Game of the Week will come your way from Boston, Massachusetts, the Boston College Eagles. They're going to host what surely will be an emotional squad from West Point, the Army Cadets, a team that will be the opponent, Alumni Stadium. But you can bet they'll receive warm greetings from everyone there. That's next Saturday at noon Eastern, Boston College and Army. Seabrooks has been outstanding this afternoon. He, Barry, and Cologne have made a more than their share of tackles. But after meeting with Greg Schiano and his coaching staff yesterday, it sounds like their training room is full. Tough break for Seabrooks. So you got to like this guy, 35 years old, youngest coach in Division I football that's a head coach. Well, he's got some serious football pedigree, too. And you know what? He's been around some great programs. We mentioned it earlier. Runs a tight shift, likes to have his hands on everything. Uh, certainly everybody here hopes he turns this thing around. Grant Knoll, 13 of 18 passing, 113 yards, three touchdowns, all in the first half. Burnell, nice spin, 24-yard line, first down, Virginia Tech. Gary Brackett with the tackle. When we met yesterday with Ricky Bustle, he said one thing. He says, you know, Brunel got here at the same time that Lee Suggs did. He says, we've been waiting on him to really step up. He said he started at last spring, had a tremendous spring, and really didn't have the expectation of getting a lot of playing time, but it speaks volumes for his preparation during the offseason. He's got 11 rushes for 76 yards to this point. Going for more, make it 12. Picks up about four more. Penalty flag on the play lead. Like Torrance Heggie Torrance on the tackle for Rutgers. They don't pay officials by the flag, do they? <laughs> this has been a busy group this afternoon. 31 nothing, Virginia Tech. Illegal chop block. Tech got four scores in the first quarter. Burnell a one yard run. Ferguson passes to uh, Noel passes to Ferguson for three, Hawkins for 16, and Parham for five. Illegal block by the waist on the offensive team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. 5:42 to go, third quarter. Big East football. So we begin our 2001 season. Glad you're with us for our coverage at Rutgers. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders with you and our Big East crew. Here in Central Jersey, nice to be back. Good looking day as try to return to their normal lives here in the U.S. of A. after the September 11th attack on the World Trade Center. Virginia Tech, four penalties, 60 yards. Good play there by Raheem Orr, number one for Rutgers. 6'4", 240, a junior out of nearby Elizabeth, New Jersey. Coming off a high ankle sprain a couple of weeks ago against Buffalo. Clock running down. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Grant Knoll taking over for Michael Vick. They're looking for that old shovel pass, and Grant Knoll takes it down. Takes a pop on the sideline from Dwayne Thompson. Picked up about four or five. There's Dwayne, senior out of Pittsburgh's Penn Hills High School. 
Probably fortunate that he didn't get uh, flagged. I mean, anytime yep. you hit the quarterback, either in the pocket, anywhere around the head, or anywhere near the sideline, watch out. Those are two no-nos. So what they do here, Davis will beat a Knowles right, flanked outside the slot man, Ernest Wilford. Third down and 18. Steps and throws, he's got it to Wilford to the 19 yard line. Nathan Jones on the coverage for Rutgers. Wilford out of Richmond, Virginia. Fork Union Military Academy. It's his second catch of the season. Carter Worley is gonna come in for a field goal attempt. 37 yards, one of two today. at his last field goal from 38 yards. 37 yard field goal attempt on the right hash is good. So a couple of scores here in the third quarter by Carter Worley makes it 34 nothing. Having this been the first time we've seen Grant Knoll play have to be very impressed with his maturity. The way he handles the uh, huddle the way he walks to the line of scrimmage doesn't ever seem to be rattled. And if you look at their schedule, Dave, uh, it's not unthinkable that the uh, last game of the regular season, December 1st against Miami, will not only be for the Big East Championship, but will be for a BCS Bowl, maybe one to the Rose Bowl. That's right. <laughs> Take a peek at the Virginia Tech Hokies uh, schedule. The 29th, they play a good Central Florida team. Uh, Mike Kruzik, uh, former uh, teammate of mine, Pittsburgh Steeler, traveled to uh, Morgantown and play uh, West Virginia. They've got Boston College and Syracuse at home, at Temple, at, at Pittsburgh, at Virginia. December 1st, folks, Ooh. mark the calendar. Mark the calendar. That's a goodie. That is a good one. Virginia Tech's a very good football team. I said this before the season. Miami is loaded. Yes, they are. They had a chance for a return from the one. Nathan Jones ridden down at the 23. D'Angelo Hall, number four, brought him down. So Wiley, 37 yards, two of three today. And there's Sean Seabrooks leaving the facilities. And let's go down to John Sanders, John. It looks like Sean Seabrooks is done. He's had a kind of a tough day. Remember, he had the bruised back earlier. This is a left knee strain. They're going to ice it down and, of course, take a look at him closer later on. But you'd have to think that he's going to head to the Whirlpool, maybe get some ice, because his afternoon is probably finished, guys. All right, John, thank you. Comes a reverse. Trey Moses. Got the first down, maybe face mask, attack on another 15 there. So a nice game for Rutgers. I think somebody in the stands even threw a flag on that <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, I mean, There were flags flying from every direction. <laughs> Picks up 15. You have to like uh, Bill Kupik. Let a rip, you know? You know what? Open up your playbook. We're down 34 let let's, let's have fun anyway. That's right. Don't be shy. Not now. Rest in the face mask. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. I like the call. Looks like the option. Uh oh, we got the ball going the other direction. If Howard, uh, if Howard Blackwood would do a better job blocking down Philly, may still be running. You saw the face mask, and then it started raining right there. <laughs> You know what? That hurts. Yes, sir. You know, your neck is not. There's only one person I've seen's neck that will spin around like that. Linda Blair. That's right. Oh, we, re we remember. We remember the movie, right? Sure do. And L.J. Smith, that play tried some trickery, and it cost him about four or five yards. Taylor disrupted that play. How many tackles has he made this afternoon? I tell you what, Taylor's got to. You know, if we're taking over under, he's got to be about 15. No huddle again for Rutgers. They get Ed Jordan off the field. And in motion is Aaron Martin. Cubit got some time. Punts. Now under some pressure. Oh, and that's a fumble, folks. That is a fumble. Taylor tried to pick it up. 
And luckily for Rutgers, Seth Stanton was able to recover. The ball is all the way back to the 22-yard line. Cause Colas forced that fumble. And this is football lesson 101. If the ball is on the ground, fall on it. You see the type of speed that this defense has. Colas is uh, able to get the cubic from behind. The ball stays on the ground. Fall on it, Ben. Fall on it, Ben. One in a little six spot next to his name. It was lose 25 yards on that play. Run the draw. Guess who? Nothing doing. Number 40, Ben Taylor with yet another That's tackle. That's right. Cuba got hit 14 times last uh, time out against Miami. And he had his chin busted open and had some stitches put in that thing. He's been hit nine times today, sack three. You see his father, Bill. See, he's gone to a different book. Sure enough. He had one page earlier. <laughs> now he's going to a book. Boy, it's been tough. Boy, you're 18 years old. Your second game of your college career against the number two, number one team, and then game three, the number nine team. Hello. It's only going to get better. Boy. Well, one thing that they're doing a lot of here at Rutgers is promoting the fact that Greg Shadow is their new coach, and John Sanders will pick up the rest of the story. The rest of the story is a pretty good one, actually, and they have enlisted some of their better-known alumni to help them publicize this football team. Take a look at this commercial for Rutgers football. Feels good to be back. I sure it does. Oh, it's you. I can't believe it. I'm a huge fan this season is gonna be great everybody's talking about it and what a great bunch of guys you got that whole jersey thing going it's unbelievable my kids love you guys it's a program the whole family can get behind so is it too much to ask can i get an autograph coach chiano i can't take you anywhere <laughs> Terrific, very innovative. James Gandolfini, one of the outstanding alums from Rutgers, is the Scarlet Knights kick it away. Gentlemen. Thanks, John. Very effective spot. Mike Barr has been very active. That was his seventh punt. Been averaging 39-8 on his yardage. And Virginia Tech, that was a 34-yard punt. Tech will have it in good shape at their own 40. Well, is Greg Siano the guy? Jeff Bostic. Well, history would say no. I mean, you look at the record of Terry Shea, uh, Doug Graver, Dick Anderson, Come Frank on, Burns. Uh, nobody. It's been somewhat of a coach's on, graveyard here. He has certainly got an uphill challenge. Being a Jersey guy, he wanted this job. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful what you ask for sometimes. <laughs> got a lot of people rooting for him. Right, first teamer still in there. Jones scrambled out of it. Initial tackle. And you notice one thing about the Virginia Tech offensive lineman. Look at all those orange things on there, on the legs. The knee, knee, braces, knee yeah. braces. That is something that the coaches throughout the country should require their players to wear. You see those things, folks? I've knee stabilizers? Through, I've been through three knee operations, and believe me, none of them were fun. And those things are amazing at saving ligament damage and time off the field. If you're a high school kid or a college kid, Pros. I have been on a couple guys with the Washington Redskins. Put those things on. Jones yes. bounces one up the middle. About a two-yard gain. And they look pretty simple. You see the knee braces early, those little orange things, late flag. Your knees are what keeps you in the game. Now, obviously, when you've got knees that big, you don't you don't need a whole lot of protection. <laughs> Are they, what, what's the weight on those? Uh, those the, things are remarkably light. I would say each one of those knee braces may weigh two, two and a half pounds. That's not bad at all. It may not be that heavy, but uh, they're tested somewhere in the vicinity of 2,000 pounds. Up for a first down. Unsportsmanlike penalty against Rutgers gives Virginia Tech enough yardage for a first down. Our attendance today here at Rutgers Stadium, 27,514, 27514. 
And I don't think they can be disappointed with the uh, defensive performance or their special teams. Right. Uh, you're, you're dealing with a freshman quarterback. Freshman quarterback are going to play like freshmen. Against a fabulous defensive unit. Oh, aired it out. Davis is there. Touchdown. Oh, they wipe it off. There's a penalty flag, however, at the five. It looked like Davis made the catch. Tony Berry covering for Rutgers. Tony Berry's going to get called for interference, and he's trying to plead his case. But Davis separated from him with the speed and with the bump. Tony, a senior out of Rome, New York. And Andre Davis can't believe he didn't make the catch. Pass interference against the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Once again, Barry's man to man. I really don't see a lot of contact right there. It must yeah, have been before we yeah, saw it. I mean, a couple of strides before we picked it up. Yeah. That's one of those things where you'd like to have your receiver six foot four instead of six foot one. Yeah. Penalties, Rutgers 11 for 78 yards, five for 73 for Virginia Tech. Johnson's in the game, number 12. Jones cut it back against the grain and paid for it. Lost about four. Alfred Peterson on the stop, along with Leonard for Rutgers as we near the end of the third quarter here at Rutgers Stadium. Home opener for Greg Ciano and his new coaching staff been all Virginia Tech. Hokies get six points here in the third quarter. But one of the strong points of this ball club has been their defense. They have been unrelenting and they've done a real good job shutting down Rutgers. It's 34 zip by Tech. Start of the fourth quarter here at Rutgers University. And Virginia Tech on the move once again from the 30 yard line of Rutgers. Virginia Tech time of possession through three quarters, 26 minutes and 31 seconds. Rutgers, 18 minutes and 29 seconds. Short drop, slant, it's there. Ball bounced in. They give him credit. They give him the catch, Ernest Wilford. On this side of the field, people were the same thought that I did. I thought that baby bounced in. But Wilford gets the catch. Talk about a big rangy receiver. Six foot five, 211 pounds. The eye in the sky never lies. Catch. Good catch. These guys do get it right occasionally. Sure do. Johnson in the slot. Jones gets the call. Ooh, good hit. Penalty flag coming in from the field judge. Chris Baker. Tackled by Nate Leonard. Nate Leonard was in there. Check that, Nate Leonard with the tackle. Penalty going to be assessed against Virginia Tech. I tell you, Kevin Jones has got a couple of shots put on him. Yes, today. he has. Welcome to big time college football. Welcome to Piscataway. I hope you enjoy your visit. <laughs> yeah, really. You know, that's not good as a running back when the back Illegal part block of in the back on the offensive team, 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay, first down. I think a lot of that, too. He spins so much, too. So you'll see him get put down right here. Good lick. Boom. Oh, that's the lick right there, Nate Leonard. Hey, big time recruit. My name's Nate Leonard. Welcome to <laughs> Rutgers. Yeah. 12 carries, 46 yards, and a couple of bruises. Yeah, he got hit up in the facial area first half. Out of the gun. Fake screen right, come back left. Look at that. Super effort by Wayne Briggs, the 5'10", 247-pound senior from Windsor, Virginia. Terrell Freeney finally ended the play. 
And this is the second time they've ran this play this afternoon. They tried it in the first quarter. It's almost a double screen. Take the fullback, go one way, go the tailback the other one. Fake to the right, throw to the left. You've got to give the fullbacks a crumb occasionally. You know, Briggs doesn't get to run the ball that often, although I think he could. Mm-hmm. Another walk-on. Third fullback last year, special teamer on kickoff return team. Frank Beamer will give you a chance if you want to play football. That's right. No, hung, hung in there beautifully. Touchdown. Keith Willis. Grant Knoll really showed you something in there under duress. And a nice play by Willis to go down and get it. A seven yard TD pass. You once again have to comment about Grant uh, Knoll's poise. Never seems to be rattled in the pocket. He has that clock that goes off in his mind. That was a tremendous catch also. Point after is good. good. No doubt about that one. The Grant Knoll will be winding his way back to Blacksburg, Virginia. Happy young man. Four TD passes on the afternoon. This one to hook up to Keith Willis. Willis's first TD catch this season. 41 zip. Attack. Nothing, Virginia Tech over Rutgers here in the fourth quarter. Not quite a minute in. John Mulra to kick it off for Virginia Tech. Another sailor. This one caught two yards deep by Jones. 10, 15, 20. 24 yard line. Not bad. Garnell Wilds, number 17. Last five meetings. No contest. Grant Knoll, 17 of 22, 164 yards and four TDs this afternoon. That's a quick study, but that's 51 points a game. That mm -hmm. And they said a college education doesn't come in handy. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Cuban is still in there at quarterback. Got to run down some of the replacements. Got to believe. Jimmy Tech start really empty that bench. Dalrico Fletcher, the intended receiver. Larry Austin, the starting corner, almost hit a pick. This is some of the growing pains that you go through with a young quarterback. And you have to leave him on the field. I mean, he has to uh, he has to grow through this and mature as a quarterback. And they're going to go back and watch the tape tomorrow. And he's going to realize, you know what? I did some pretty dumb things with the football, but he's going to learn from it. Different ball carrier this time that was Marcus Jones a freshman out of St. Augustine Florida. T.J. Jackson on the tackle. Well, heck of a way to start your conference right against Miami and Virginia Tech. And these are combined yards folks. 220 yards in two games. Cuban on that third down play picks up about three. Darius Monroe and we talked about them not being a team good enough right here to commit you know 10 fumbles and lose six of them Ugh. 23 penalties. And another three and out. Low snap. Pretty good pressure better kick Davis runs all the way back to the 12 to get it picking up the wall bang there's one here's another one 25 30 32 yard line nice return that was beautifully set up you had one guy I don't know who it was we'll check it on the replay when we come back but he got an absolute freebie on that punt return Davis a 22 -year yarder will be back with more in a moment Wherever you are in this country, fly the colors and keep them flying. 41 nothing here as college football is back here in the Big East. Kevin Jones, the deep back here for Virginia Tech. Doug Eastlick 
fullback. And a new quarterback. It's Brian Randall. Jones cuts it up. Took another look there. Picks up about five. Take a look at this, uh, the previous punt return. There was a chance to really get an erasure here. You talk about peripheral vision. Any good punt returner is going to make the first guy miss. Freeze it right there. This is overrunning a block. Or we hope for this reason. Yeah. Rutgers tight end L.J. Smith, number 85, could see that block coming, and he threw the brakes off. Mm -hmm. I know I anticipated a pretty big meeting there. Brian Randall, the new quarterback, freshman out of Williamsburg, Virginia, went to Bruton High School. They're going to have a chance to throw it. And, ooh, got way too much on that one. And let's go to our Sports Center studios. Mike Gleason's got another update on Florida State, North Carolina. That's right, Dave. Another update and another North Carolina touchdown. Darian Durant with two touchdown passes. This time, it's Ronald Curry throwing off his back foot, 53 yards to a wide open Corey Bailey, 20 unanswered points. 27-9, Carolina over the Knolls. Dave? Boy, that changes the landscape of college football, doesn't it? This is Big East football from Piscataway, New Jersey. Number nine, Virginia Tech taking on Rutgers. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders. Nice run there by Ryan Randall. Brought down by Alfred Peterson. Been all Virginia Tech. 28 points in the first quarter. Took advantage of several turnovers. Grant Knoll, the quarterback, has had a fabulous day with four TD passes. Carter Worley's got two field goals, both coming in the third quarter. Who would have ever thought North Carolina to beat Florida State? 11 0 1 all time, and there was a, a run there where they were close to Florida State, but of late, it hasn't been a contest. Give it to the fullback. First down to the 40. Doug Eastlick out of Marlton, New Jersey. Terrell Feeney, uh, Feeney brought him down. He had to get uh, Doug Eastlick some action here, being a Marlton, New Jersey guy. About an hour south of here with Cherokee High School. And it sounds like from uh, Mike Gleason's reports that uh, Ronald Curry, another Virginia product, uh, his playing time and playing days at North Carolina in football may very well be uh, coming to an end. Betcha. I remember seeing him in the McDonald's All-American game. He was a heralded basketball player, All-American in, in hoops, All-American quarterback. But it has not worked out for Ronald Curry at uh, Chapel Hill. And everybody thought he was a better uh, football player than basketball. Uh, it's kind of tough to be uh, competing at this level in two different sports. Bet. Don't forget, next week, Big East football continues. We'll head up to Boston. It'll be the Army Cadets against Willie Green and the Boston College Eagles. That's next Saturday at noon Eastern time. Make sure you join us for that. Nation goes on as our president has asked, and so does our schedule here on the Big East Network. Grant Knoll, 17 of 22 today, 164 yards and four touchdowns. We saw that picture of Grant Knoll with the ice bag on his left arm, right? He's uh, right. I believe that was, yeah. Right. Injured Rutgers player, Nate Cologne. I think Nate in the first half had to have had at least a dozen tackles. Nate Cologne. I'll tell you what, he's played one heck of a game. I'm not sure they can afford any more injuries to their secondary. No, sir. We uh, earlier in the game saw Seabrooks lead with a, uh, a knee injury. And this is a team that simply does not have enough depth to continue to lose healthy bodies. Players waiting. Referees holding up play until uh, Nate gets to the sideline. Slow walk. Look at the groin injury. Didn't very uncomfortable looking walk. Randall will come out of the shotgun formation and hey, look at that against the blitz. Cut it inside. If he had gotten a better block from Ernest Wolford, he might have been able to take that out all, all the way home. Picks up 15 yards, brought down by Brad Cunningham. Pretty significant step there. Todd Greenwood, the last two freshmen, started quarterback, gets some action. And he shows his mobility. 
You know what? It looks a little bit like a running back there. Mm -hmm. you know, cutting and look at the guy blocking downfield, number seven, Kevin Jones. That's showing me something. He catch that. I'm going to wipe it off. Nose of that ball was pointed downward, so it didn't have much of a chance, but Keith Willis made a heck of an effort. And Frank Beamer is getting his back up some. Uh, Check that. That was, uh, that was one of the backup tight ends. That was number 85, Jared Mazetta. Frank Beamer has emptied his bench, Dave, and replaced all his starting offensive linemen. And this is where these young men that are that are playing uh, Miller and Dunn and Grove and Owens and Selman. This is where they get their experience. This is their reward for practice. Randall's going to throw again. They pick up the blitz. Got a man wide open over the middle with the Mazetta again and they overthrow it. Ed Martin covering on the play. You know George and family are here today. George and Diane. George Martin. Fabulous player, guy you went nose to nose with several times when he was with the New York Football Giants. Two sons on this club, Ben. The defensive back and Aaron, the wide receiver. Fletcher, fair, fair catch at the 15 yard line. Timeout on the field with 10.01 to go. Back to Rutgers, the birthplace of college football, right after this. Back here at Rutgers, 41 to nothing, Virginia Tech. 10-01 to go, fourth quarter. <laughs> Got to run down some of this personnel, some of these personnel changes for Rutgers on that first offensive unit. Looks like they've got most of them still in the ball game. What right, nothing doing there as they try to get up the middle and lose about a yard. Let's take a look at our best plays of the game brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And the star of the show, Grant Knoll. Grant Knoll, 17 for 22, 164 yards, four touchdown passes. The last one to Parm. Got to be impressed with this guy's poise, his maturity, and his leadership ability. Cubit, deep ball, Aaron Martin. Laid out for it, but couldn't get it. Covered by Eric Green. Wonder what's going through Ron Kubik's mind right now. You know, well, I think that's a terrific question. You've been out on the football field uh, the last two contests. You've been outscored 102 to nothing. Mm hmm. He's played two of the top teams in the nation. Screen dropped by L.J. Smith. And your veteran tight end dropped your screen pass. Penalty flag on the play, though. There. You're right, Jeff. Good catch on the left arm. Yeah, you see right there the uh, ice bag on the left arm. He could take the shoulder pads off. He ain't playing anymore. <laughs> His offensive coordinator, Ricky Bustle, really spoke volumes of this guy down on the field before the game. And I don't know anybody that would envy having to come in and play after Michael Vick has left. Good point. You know, he had you want to replace the, the guy who replaced the legend, right? There's Mr. Ricky right there. Oh, Henny for about two. Little uh, trivia. Ricky Bustle right. was a starting wide receiver my uh, freshman year. There he is right there, Mr. Bustle and his, you know, his cool local sunglasses. <laughs> he was a starting wide receiver in front of what Super Bowl champion? Uh, so I know, I've been working for five years. I know the answer. Number 87, Dwight Clark. The, uh, the mastermind of uh, the little thing called the catch. Yeah, I saw that the other day. I was watching with my... My youngest son got a kick out of watching that. Here's a ball up in the air. Good effort. Did he come down with it? No, sir. Good effort by Sean Carty, the junior from Somerville, New Jersey. Good effort. We mentioned this guy's name earlier. I know you're a trivia buff. You know what? Great effort by Carty. 
unable to get the ball down in bounds. And it seems to me that Kubik, he throws the ball and kind of doesn't finish his arm. It mm -hmm. kind of it kind of flies on him. Cardi getting off the oh, ground. Good athleticism. Almost. Obviously, the ball hits the ground. Good mm -hmm. call by the uh, guys in the striped shirts. I got, I got a trivia question. Lou Spall, so Rutgers now one out of 12. One out of 12 on third down situations this afternoon. We talked about this guy earlier in the game, Bud Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. Where did he end his coaching career? Arizona Cardinals. St. Louis Cardinals, 1979. Good job. You're all. You're, you're a wealth of knowledge Man. right now. Try to put some of it to use. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that college education earlier. Yeah, right. 8-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Mike Barr's got one completed pass today. No, it's not. Oh, there's a block. It's only a matter of time. They pick it up. They can get a touch. Touchdown. Vincent Fuller. He falls on it in the end zone. And they're going to call it a safety. This should come to no surprise to anybody that has watched Virginia Tech football over the 90s and even into 2001. 85th block punt. Watch right here, folks, the edge of your screen. They have done this, and they have really set the bar. Eric Green, number one with the block. Mike Barr has no chance of getting that ball off. And then it's a scramble. Who can recover the ball? And look at the extension. Yes. That's the one thing that they teach. Don't go to the punter. Go to where the ball is going to be. There's a fine line between those two. He advanced the ball. That, and he can't score a touchdown in that manner. 43 to nothing. And Ed Jordan, number 83 for Rutgers, must have been able to wrestle that ball away from Virginia Tech's number eight, Vincent Fuller. That is why it was called a safety. Okay. Maybe we can go back to that replay and you can see Ed Jordan coming onto that pile late. And the officials will let you fight for the football. I bet you Ed Jordan took that ball away from Fuller. In any event, it's 43 nothing. 7.51 to go here in the fourth quarter. Free kick for Mike Barr. Not bad. Davis will take it. 22 yard line. Got some help. Got some people knocked down. And Davis takes it for the 46 47 yard line. Nathan Jones brings him down. Fuller looks like he's got this thing, right? He hits the ground oh, right yeah. there. The ball pops out. And look at Jordan. Sticks his arm right there. I'll tell you what, I even scare myself at times. <laughs> Good hustle by Jordan. Save five points. Greg Schiano and his coaching staff are going to look at this tape tomorrow. He may look at it tonight knowing him. Oh, well, no, I don't think he will not question. be disappointed by his team's effort the second half. Randall, good starting position. Swings it out to his fullback. And that time Wayne Briggs. And, you know, Virginia Tech has a well-known reputation for special teams. Last year's meeting with Rutgers at Blacksburg, they did it again. First came a block. Then a muff snap contributed to a turnover in the punting game. Since Biggie's play began in 1991, the Hokies have blocked Four Scarlet Knight kicks make it five counting this afternoon. And did you see the replays? Eric Green blocked the punt last year. He tackled Mike Barr last year on the muff punt, and he blocked the punt this afternoon. Boy. Some people have a knack for doing that. Sure enough, Mike Barr may want to think about a bodyguard. Jones ran into his own man. Keeps it alive, though, to the 30-yard line. A lot of Tech fans on the far side stand and applaud. Mitchell Davis brings him down 17 yards. There's something magical about that number seven in a Vitek uniform. Tell you what, it's very elusive. I can tell you that. Boy. Richard Johnson almost made the best tackle of the day for, <laughs> for Virginia Tech, and that's an embarrassing thing. You know, trying to help your teammate yeah. and getting in the way. Right. 
I'm sure uh, Kevin will mention it too, uh, Richard. 17 yards on that carry, 14 for 68 yards for Jones. I give the fullback Briggs a carry. Long afternoon for Rutgers. Chance for a lot of people to get to play for Virginia Tech. I think if you'd ask Frank Beamer, you know, assess the play of your football team this afternoon, a, a game that you were heavily favored in, a game that you were scheduled to, to have a fairly easy time with, I think, A, he would be very happy with the effort of his defense, namely Ben Taylor. He would like his special teams to be a little bit sharper. And I think he would be disappointed with the way his offense has played today, except for Grant Knoll. Jones for about three straight ahead. Nothing very fancy about that. Brad Cunningham, Jersey City, Hudson Catholic product. He's a freshman. Made the tackle. Hey, folks, it's a reminder to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big East team. Go online at www.bigeast.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big East Conference. Coming up on five and a half minutes. Third down at six for Virginia Tech. Randall's got a little zip on his arm there. Caught by Johnson. And run out of bounds by Dwayne Thompson. To Richard, Johnson. Take Richard Johnson. He's a redshirt freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland. You can't hardly talk about a Virginia Tech uh, football player without talking about speed. And this is so guy certainly possesses it. How about uh, Randall? Top player in Virginia last season, number two in the nation, number four quarterback in the nation. 2,826 passing yards, 2,169 rushing yards the last two years, and 58 touchdowns. Well, this is what a guy like Michael Vick does for your program. It elevates it to the elite programs right. in the country. And now, you know, Frank Beamer, uh, Ricky Bustle, uh, Bud Foster, they can go into any house and say, you know what, we're from Virginia Tech. We're, we're really right. interested in you coming and playing for our football team. And, and they get instant credibility. That's right. The door doesn't get slammed in the face. Excuse me, we're not home right now. We're on the way out to shopping. <laughs> you know, nothing like that. They answer the call. Got a, a medical uh, innovation that John Sanders wants to share with us. John, what do you have? We have a portable x-ray machine. It's located behind the Rutgers bench. And a little earlier in the ball game, D'Angelo Hall, number four for Virginia Tech, came walking all the way around. We wondered where he was going. This is where he was going to have this x-ray machine look at his left hand. As it turns out, he does have a broken bone in his left hand. However, he could come back. They could wrap it and he could still play. But it's here. It was used today and it did diagnose a broken bone in the left hand of D'Angelo Hall. Did they have this, Jeff, when you were playing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, John, I'm not that old, but I, people have accused me of folding my helmet up and putting it in my pants. I don't, I don't know what that means. 5.32 to go here in the ball game here at Rutgers. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, John Sanders with you. Busted play, Randall. Uh-oh. He's going to make something out of this. One man to beat. To the 10, to the 9. Tony Berry saved the touchdown. And Brian Randall is going to go to the sideline, and his teammates are going to be all over him because he couldn't beat one guy in the open field. 13 yards on the pick. Te teammates are relentless. Oh, no question. You know what? This is like the guy in the marching band that's going the wrong direction. That's right. Everybody's going the, you know, his parents are saying, what's wrong with everybody else? Well, he makes something out of nothing. Let me tell you something. That play works so well. They may put that in the yeah. book. Right? We're going to run that again. <laughs> Boy, that was pretty effective. Pick up 13. Randall, three rushes for 38 yards. This time he hands off to Jones. Grinds his way for about two. You know, you, the more you think about that, it is a misdirection play. Yeah. You know, you put think, it in. You, everybody on your line is going left. Your running backs are going left. The flow is going to obviously go that direction. It required no acting. Exactly. That was reality TV no, right there, right? That was reactioning. <laughs> that was a reactionary movement. My goodness. Chris Shreve is to the top of your screen. First time we've seen him tonight. Jones 
Slams up the middle. Jeremy Campbell with the tackle out of Montclair, New Jersey, number 44. Well, how about all the Virginia Tech faithful that came up? We were told about 4,000 strong, and many of them from the Washington, D.C. area, your former stopping grounds. Where we talked to one gentleman yesterday in the hotel. He said, hey, you live here, you root for two of what? Two of three teams. Virginia Tech or that other school in Charlottesville and the Washington Redskins. <laughs> so they said nothing. No big deal driving three and a half hours from Washington DC. Jones to about the two. He's pretty strong. And these people are passionate about their football. Yes, they are. Wear the colors. And uh, spent some time last night with David Pugh Sr. And he has never missed the game his son has played. Wow. That is a commitment from a parent. And I yes. had the same type of support at home. Same here. Uh, Can't say enough about it. You never forget it. That's right. You see all the uh, hokey faithful. And they, you know, it's they, been pretty easy the last couple of years. Yes. You know, you win a lot of football games, mm -hmm. go to a lot of big bowls. I know when I was leaving the hotel, I saw about four or five buses pulling up. Here's Warley from 20 yards out. They missed that one. Can't believe it. And Carter Warley on the afternoon is two out of five. Take a break. Nonetheless, it's still been all Virginia Tech. Welcome back, everybody. Number nine, Virginia Tech. All over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this afternoon, 43 nothing. Carter Riley just missed a field goal. He's two for four in the afternoon. So now Ted Trump running the offense for Rutgers and hands off to Ricky Cook. Not a heck of a lot going on there. And let's get down to the sidelines and John Sanders. David, you guys have been talking about the state of Rutgers. Exactly what is that? We decided to go to the governor of this state of Rutgers and ask him to outline those boundaries. Everything that you have to drive through New Jersey to get to. And, uh, you know, that's New Jersey, obviously, New York City, the five boroughs, Long Island. And then we throw in a little teeny other piece, and that's South Florida, uh, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. And, and, and in those areas, we're going to be in every single high school every year. They have been in every single high school. They've worked hard on these New Jersey high school coaches as the quarterback is knocked down. It looks like it's going to be a touchdown for Virginia Tech. So that's the state of Rutgers. I know you guys knew that, but we just thought we'd clear it up. Big Channing Reed, John, was the young man who scored number 53. You're going to love those quicks for a big fella like that to get in there and get six as Ted Trump got knocked down. And Channing Reed scores the first TD of his college career. Nine defensive and special team TDs in the last 10 games against Rutgers. And that is a defensive lineman's dream. Pick up a fumble, score a touchdown. Hey, Mom, just... Guess what I did tonight? Channing Reed, 6'2", 316. He's a Jersey guy from Trenton Central. So it means even more to him. He's a Jersey guy. They may be fudging on his way. Uh, I, will con I would be willing to go in with you on that one. Trump's in the pocket. You got to know when that timetable goes off. Pressure by Jim Davis. Channing Reed picks up the fumble. This is not where a quarterback wants. Look at this. Boy, he Look beat his man. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Both hands on the yes, ball. Sir. Good job by the big guy. I got six. But I think they uh, somewhat cheated him on the 316-pound thing. Uh, Boy, that's got to feel good for that young man. Look at him. He can't quit smiling. That's it. He said, yeah, I, had, I outran him the whole way. <laughs> And who was it that he beat on that and picking it, picking up the fumble? See right here, this is this is where all big guys, right here at the belly section, he's got a little bit of that, but you got to have that to play that position. That he can tell you every outstanding place to, to get a meal in Blacksburg. In Blacksburg, yes sir. So when we go there, we're looking that young man up. <laughs> you would probably ask him, what is your favorite favorite meal? My last one. <laughs> Well, I love it with lineman score because there's nothing like that kind of smile. Hey, man, look what I did. I played with the guy that he is bigger than he makes big men feel small. Joe Jacoby. Big Joe, yeah. Six foot eight, 325 pounds. He scored a touchdown 
in Minneapolis playing the uh, Vikings and he jumped on the ball. We thought he crushed it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jones catches it on the run, 25, 27-yard line. Well, Jeff, I tell you, I live in mid, in uh, New York City, Midtown, and I, that uh, the attack on the World Trade Center. I mean, it, talk about close to home. I mean, it's close to home that happened on our American soil. But I live in New York City, and I tell you what, I was very, very upset. I'm still upset by it now. And, this has been, I mean, usually we, you know, we like to bring a high energy game, a high energy broadcast, and yeah, this has been tough from a record standpoint, 50 zip with 210 to go, but I'll tell you what, I am glad, as Lee Greenwood say, sings, proud to be an American, and glad we could be here, and folks could come together, and not, not be afraid to come together in this ballpark and get college football back together, as President Bush said, hey man, let's get back and return, and return our lives to normal as much as we possibly can. And I said this off the air when uh, they finished singing the national anthem and God bless America. I don't think you will ever as an American look at that flag and sing your national anthem and not have a different feeling than you did before September 11th. No question. I'll tell you what. I think uh, I joined with you and a whole bunch of other people. Fierce determination to do whatever has to get done. You have to defend your soil. Somebody told me a long time ago before I got into this business. When you're sitting in our chairs, there are three things you don't talk about. Politics, religion, and how I, you know, play my prevent defense. Okay? <laughs> but I think sometimes you really have to step outside of that circle. Uh, oh, no, no, no doubt about it. We're fortunate to be able to broadcast a game and be at a game. But first and foremost, we're, we're first of all fortunate to be Americans. We don't know how good we have it in this country. We don't. Tell you what, and again, our hearts and our prayers go out to everyone who lost friends and family and loved ones in that just heinous attack. I mean, it was. But if you're if you're passing out kudos, the firefighters in New York City have been phenomenal. The uh, police and rescue squad. EMS. Volunteers. But I've seen it too. Uh, I went down Rudolph to. Rudolph uh, Giuliani. I'm. I, I don't know. Hey, he's, he's a got huge a hero. Huge. He's been outstanding, and it was really uh, energizing to go down. And we made a, my wife and I made a contribution down to the Red Cross, and I tell you what, there was overflow crowd on uh, 14th Street. And hearing from some folks today, said the same thing all over uh, New York City, all over the uh, Battleground Zero, etc. Well, this one is in the books, and I tell you what, you look at a police officer in a different light now too, don't you? They're your and friends. Oh, yeah. They're your friends. I think our stage manager, Steve Kerper, Stats, John Lombobarda, and Rich Frisha, and our spotter, Darren Fenster. Thank you, Freddie Hill's baseball team here at Rutgers University. Tough home conference opener, home opener for Greg Schiano. Frank Beamer shakes hands with Greg Schiano. 50 to nothing, the final, number nine, Virginia Tech. Did what it had to do our next game next Saturday. Please join us. The cadets of West Point Army will be at Boston College. That's a noon Eastern time. Start check your local listings, everybody. For Jeff Bostic, John Sanders, and our entire ESPN Plus crew, I'm Dave Sims. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. College football is back, and God bless America. See you next week.